Oh, let's go, first game. This is Espranka. Yo, guys, I'm gonna do this different than my widow one. I'm not gonna say when I think it's a good map or a bad map, I'm only gonna say the bad maps because otherwise, like, Tracer is pretty good on almost every map. There's only a few maps that aren't great for Tracer. There's a lot of techniques I'm gonna use, utilize in Tracer when I do this. The Web Doomfist, May, Moira, and Sinjata. Here I got a Gnosis on my team comp that I have a Sinjata, that means I have Orb advantage. If I ask the Sinjata for Orb, I can take more aggressive off angles. Because it's, it sticks on me and I can go deep with it. I can also follow up my Doomfist and Moira with when they engage on somebody. So that they would Doomfist, Echo, Rico, and Ilari. I gotta really try to make sure that this Doomfist doesn't do too much right now. And then also gotta be ready to put the Widow in check because otherwise she'll free, free farm like she just did with my main. Here, just look at the Echo, pressure her a bit. I do this pressure in points, so I can start to pressure from left side since he's got all the rest. I'm just gonna blink twice. Try to avoid the Widow's Alois, then wait for another blink before I go again. Shoot, then I back off. And instead of using recall here, I'm just gonna stay alive and wait for another blink so I can go towards the Mega. And get the Mega, and then this I'm scared about the Widow looking at me right now because I can see she is, so I'm gonna blink to the right and she left instantly. So she has way less of a chance of hitting me, and she ends up hitting an eye shot, so I end up dying. I could have respected her more. But I also thought she wouldn't hit it, to be honest, so it happens. Still it looks like my team is winning the fight though, but you see how I engaged deep and instead of burning my recall early on, that's a big mistake with a lot of tracer pairs. They burn their recall very early on and then they have no escape or no way of living. You cannot do that because it's the, probably like it's the only safe and strong ability you have you can utilize. I'm gonna blink over here twice now. I pressure over here in case the Widowmaker wants to peek from the right side over here. He is peeking over here, so I just try to kill her, but I end up dying because she hits a nice shot again. Shit happens. That's a nice shot. I could have been earlier, that is the, the, the thing. So now I'll just try to set up for next fight and then I'll respect the Widow. Since she killed me twice now, it's really a, a sign for me that I have to be way more careful about engaging her and time it, time it better. Something that's also good to utilize in Tracer is ping. Now that in Overwatch 2, ping is in a, a thing you can do. You, you, you can ping a lot more or you're more enabled to ping on Tracer because you're usually in positions where you can see more than most of your team. Now that I can hit the Widowmaker's high ground, I'm gonna wait for my Doomfist to do a move so I don't have all of them looking at me at once, so I'm just waiting for him to do anything. Now they're looking a bit at the Doomfist, and now I can go for it and see if I can kill the Widowmaker. He ends up dying, for it, so that's great. Now I'll just try to hurt my Doomfist because I see he's 1 HP, try to shoot the Echo at some point. Now I'll just try to clean up because we killed two of them. Then he's just about going for a high priority target that's near, and that was Larry. We we'll finish up on the Doomfist. Just blink a bit around, try to dodge his cooldowns. A lot of people misconcept the Tracer. They think Tracer is a character you need to kill a lot of stuff on, but Tracer is a very, very bait dependent character. You always want to make the enemies waste time and bait them. I'm just gonna set up over here. I wanted to blink to the behind this wall because I scouted the Widowmaker. I can blink a bit closer to the right side. And now I'm waiting for more blinks because I don't want to go in when I have. Two little blinks. A good thumb rule is about blinking in when you have more than two blinks. Now the Doomfist is completely alone since my main wall. So we go to the Doomfist and the Kiriko tries to help him so we kill him too. Now we go for the Echo since he's uh, clean up at this point. I recalled so I was very low and I was scared about the Widowmaker peeking main. Now listen, I can hear that the Larry is behind so she ends up dying because she went all alone. But don't go in unless you have two blinks. That's a very good thumb rule on Tracer. Another good thumb rule, now that I finally got my Pulse Bomb, is Pulse Bomb works a lot like melee. So when you blink melee, 
post bomb is the same. If you post bomb and then blink after, it's gonna have this around the same hitbox as when you as when you blink melee. I'm now going from the right side here since I heard the Widowmaker was high ground. Now we pressure her, blink behind her, so it's hard for her to headshot me. And we can just slowly kill her without taking too much of a risk. And I can go backwards over here. She'll be Kiriko now because she's all alone in the back line. And now she's TP'd into my team. I'm just gonna follow her and punish her. Killing her. Now we're forced to be Queen and the Lowry now because she's ulting. Just try to shoot up the Lowry. I should probably shoot the turret first. And now we just finish off the Lowry because she has no cooldowns left. And then we go for the Echo next. Now we dodge the Widowmaker. I don't have to recall that because I have a Mario right next to me. We blink a bit up, focus the echo, try to dodge the wood at the same time, one for the wood because she was just standing still. Then I'm just gonna use this corner here to try and bait them a bit so we can get more card progress. I still don't have to recall because I could just blink right back one blink towards my Moira and no need to burn my recall whatsoever. Then we can just waste the queen's time a bit and now I'm waiting for my team to come back. Now I'm gonna wait for my Doomfist to do a move. And she's doing a move now, I'm gonna go left side, I'm gonna scout for anybody I can fight. So I'm fighting the Echoes and she's the closest, I can hit the Widow Mask top. So I'm just gonna play below here, because her walking forward here trying to shoot me is very far for her. So I don't I don't expect her to do that. Now I'll just try to shoot the back line, finish off anybody in my Doom shooting, go for the Echo. Because the Echo was low and blew away from her own healing. And since my team lost the fight, looks like then I'm just gonna... Wait, I can actually, I can join the fight because there's still two al people alive and I killed one. But the fight is right now still winnable. I just had to think about it for a sec because it looked like it wasn't. We go for the Larry because she's not seeing anything and then we just follow the... I mean the Kiriko first and then with the Larry after. And we just finish off the Larry, the Kiriko and the Widowmaker. You see how I have all my cooldowns when I'm fighting these... taking, taking these fights and I'm not too scared about... about going in when I have all my cooldowns because I can dodge most of what they have and I can always recall out. So now I just try the Larry pylon and I can look for a post bomb. I'm just gonna finish off the Larry here because she's standing in the corner. Now we should be Kiriko trying to bait her Susu. This is a good thing when you have post bomb is when the enemy team has a Kiriko you try to bait the Susu first because the Susu completely nullifies your post bomb. But we end up finishing her off because she was all alone and then we should kill the Echo after and then I can just hide for a second so I don't die because I don't oh, never mind this swap wouldn't make her. If this little wouldn't make I needed to watch out. Here I'm just gonna blink towards the Ana and pull from her. So she ends up dying. So it's just a two blink and then throw the pull bomb around. Now I'm looking for the Echo because I can hear her fighting and she's out of her support LOS right now. So I'm actually just gonna push in, try to shoot the Echo. She's very low, so she ends up being so high in the air that I end up finding a different target that's just the Kiriko because I heard her use TP, so she doesn't have a lot of cooldowns. I'm just blink over towards the Mega because some of my teammates died and they took over the space we were fighting in, so I'm just gonna disengage once my team can push again. Now the Cassidy tries to take a duel with me and fights me, so I'm just gonna use two blinks close to him, end up getting hindered, which is fine because I can just recall after. Now we just focus on the Cass. Trying to kill him before he gets too much healing. Doesn't look like I'll be able to, so I'm just gonna play the duel even slower and just hide a bit for a second. Even though he hits a hinder now, I should be fine. Just start do a bit of ADAD movement from right to left. And you see we stalled him out so much that his Ana couldn't help him anymore. So I just stalled and waited until I had the advantage in the duel. And uh, he just kept pushing. So now we focus the Echo because she's deeper within my team. And then we just hide behind the card now because they have a high new mob. And we end up capping. Victory. So it's not about mechanical baits and being aware of what the people you're dueling can do against you. Play of the game. Yo guys, I quickly want to announce that I've decided to create a Discord coaching community. We offer a total of 8 classes in a monthly subscription where I coach you in various subjects to help you improve your Overwatch skill significantly. The price of the subscription is at $30 a month, but right now there's a discount and you can get it for just 25 bucks. It doesn't matter what rank or skill you have, it's all about learning and improving.
Furthermore, just by joining the server, you will have a chance to get a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me. We draw two lucky winners each month. We plan to offer more and more in the future, so join the link in the description, come have a look. Thank you for your time. Let's go. Prepare to attack. Select your hero. to see what problems we encounter on this mission. Helping those in need is its own reward. Okay. So the combo we have is Monkey, Echo, Mercy, and Kiriko. I need to be ready to take positions and follow up my Monkey and also my Echo when they're diving or when they're engaging. It's essential that I try to time it together with my Monkey to get the most value out of my uh, existence. It's also essential that I help my Monkey focus down targets so he won't get too pressured. I'm just gonna go out and rotate out lane. I can hit up a Trace, they have a Widowmaker. They have a Moira, they have a Kiriko. And the Sigma. The Mara messed up her fate, so I'm just gonna go very deep and shoot on the Mara. She ends up dying. And my monkey disengages, so I'm just gonna wait a second before I engage again until he's ready. We just punish the Mara instantly because she did a big mistake. Now we shoot the Sigma a bit because he's inside of a monkey bubble. We shoot the Widow as well because you get caught up inside of it. Link around the Sigma rod because we don't want to get hit by that ability. They use Susu. I can go a bit more aggressive maybe when you have the Sigma. Now we go for the Kiriko because she has no teleporter and no Susu. Now we focus the Mara down. We don't have to push Mara now though because it's a bit too risky to continue pushing there since they have respawn advantage and we just want the to capture the point, so no need in doing more risky than I have to. Now I'm gonna set up the high ground scout for the Widowmaker. It looks like they swap to Reaver instead of Widowmaker, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. The Mara faded up on, on my monkey, so we're just gonna finish her off. And I'm gonna watch out from where the tracer is going because I wanna match her or or make it hard for her to do things on my backline. That's also another essential part of tracer gameplay, is you wanna make sure that the other tracer cannot do too much. Focus to Reaver since you feel there's no fade and he's trying to kill my Mercy that's resting my uh, Echo. Now we shoot the Tracer because she's inside of a monkey bubble. You think recall is war, so now I'm gonna chase the Tracer since she's very colorful and then I'm killing her. I'm gonna shoot the Mogga a bit, try to figure out if there's anybody else. It's good to go for it. Doesn't look like it. My monkey's engaging, so I'm gonna try to go with my monkey and help him a bit. Doesn't look like he can get a lot of value though, so I'm just gonna disengage with my monkey. Not using too many blinks, so I have them to get out. See, the life reaver is going top, so I'm just gonna instantly go on the life reaver since he's alone top. When I'm killing him, I'm gonna do a post bomb on try to hit the soldier and get missing. Now I'm just gonna blink a bit across. Now I can recall since I'm very low and I can just drop and disengage the duel all throughout to help my echo duel the Morgan instead because I wasn't gonna win the duel against the soldier. Focus the soldier now and we end up killing him with the reaver that's on card or alone. You see how I'm playing this very safe at the same time as I'm doing a lot of damage in positions to the enemies that can die. So I don't want to take a duel if there's no chance of me winning it ever, unless it's making my team win the fight. Now since we kept the objective, I'm gonna go up and chase a bit, trying to put some pull bomb, help my monkey with fighting the reaver. This is what I meant earlier, I wanna, I wanna make sure the reaver cannot do too much against my monkey, because the more free my monkey is, the more free I am to do whatever I want. Shoot the Kiriko a bit here, focus her down, and teleports over to the Live Reaver, so I'm gonna reload across the corner and then try to assassinate the Kiriko, it doesn't look like I'll be able to, so I end up blinking, or recalling, and I wanted to blink out throughout the Mega Room, but I died because I got headshot. I messed up my abilities there, I could have been quicker at deciding what I wanted to do, and then I probably would have survived. Looks like we lost the fight now though, so it's just about resetting. I can try to help my monkey to survive, but it looks like he's gonna die anyway. Now the Reaver is shooting in our spawn, so I'm just gonna toss him out. I'm staying in spawn. And now I'm gonna go from the left side, so my team has a better chance of walking right side by just me going left side and annoying the backline. Making the backline look at me from the left side here 
gives my team a better chance of walking into our main. Got the Kiriko bait, go for the mini over here so I can get my HP back, but the Kiriko predicted it and headshot me. So that's a nice play from her. This is how she expected me to go over to the mini, so she just did a nice flick headshot and I died. Now I can, now I'm just gonna, instead of going left side, now I'm just gonna go for main because I just wanna look for a quick post bomb. Since our post bomb is just about going to find a target, the Vivo is messing up his cooldown, so he ends up dying. Now I'm gonna try to post bomb the soldier because the soldier is awesome. We finish him down, now we go for the Kiriko because she's alone main. It all, it's all very, happening very quickly because we're in Kitsune, like my Kiriko's ult. But it's just target focus right there. I focused the soldier because he's ulting. And he didn't seem like he uh, was aware of, of of me having post bomb, so of course I'm gonna go for him first since he's the most important target since he's in the middle of ultimate. Now we just pause out the Vivo because he was taking out of space to use Susu. So I can try to shoot the Vivo down now and try to force his fade again. Make it very hard for him to survive and he ends up dying and I can just recall all the damage I took. Even go over to take the Mega but I'm basically looking instead. Now we focus down anybody trying to get to the point, trying to contest it. So I'm just gonna join on the point to make sure we push it quickly and make sure the Junkrat doesn't touch from the flank. Or oh, the off angle he was on. There is no off switch. <coughs> Score. Three to zero. Switching sides. Trace is the character that has the abilities, like the kit, the uh, kit, the kit, and the abilities to be able to survive almost everything always. That's why it's very essential that you try to have as low deaths on Trace as possible and keep up the pressure you can do by existing in their backline and being able to finish off anybody your team does damage to. That's why you see very good Trace pairs like Kevster have almost. No devs always, because he always wants to stay alive and be able to pressure or finish off or do any kind of thing he wants to do ever by just staying alive. Because when you're dead, you cannot do the same pressure as when you're alive, of course. A, a dead player does no damage. I'm gonna start over here at the right side scouting if anybody's going right, and then I'm gonna do some early chip damage onto the diva that I now have. And I'm just gonna a bit, disengage now that I got hit by the Pharah, and I see that the Pharah, I'm actually gonna go high ground now. Getting ready to pressure if anybody wants to take over the high ground since it's a power position. Now we focus on the Pharah. See if I can finish off. Doesn't look like it else, so I'm just gonna recall out. I said he didn't get the high ground, so now I'm just gonna disengage, get the mini. We try to get fully out. I can even drop down here. And go for the Mega. So I can re, uh, re -get my, regain my cooldowns and go on the backline again. Also the reason why I had to disengage was because my diva lost her mix so it was hard for me to stay in because then they suddenly had a lot more focus on me. I'm gonna see if I can one up the Pharah and attempt to re regain the point. Instead I'm gonna try to help my team now with the diva because the diva is overextending a lot. And I'm gonna look to do some pressure on point in, it, in hopes of being able to contest it. How to kill the Pharah. And I end up getting headshot by the Kiriko. My team was also fully disengaged, so that's why we end up losing. I was kind of fighting a lost cause right there, because I would have had to 1v5 the whole enemy team in order for us to win. So I probably should just, just should have disengaged instead. Now here early fight I'm gonna try to look for post bomb, but first I wanna make sure that they don't have any susu, or at least they're not being able to susu my post bomb. So... They just use the susu right there, so I can actually just go in here, blink, and then try to get the high ground because either the only two targets I have to post bomb right now is the Pharah and the Kiriko, and she had, the Kiriko has teleport. The Pharah is actually the optimal target for me to post bomb. So now that I predict the Pharah is over here, I just blink towards her, blink again, try to post bomb her. I sadly end up missing it though, but at least I made the Pharah waste time for a long for for a lot. I'm gonna treat the Pharah now because she's ulting and we shot the Mercy before because she was trying to rest. Now we shoot the Rebo at a distance so we don't get hit by his ultimate but 
So we can try to kill him. Then we go for the Kiwiko instead, because the Kiwi was alone, and then we just turn our attention to the Weaver. He had no cooldowns left and he was reloading, so it was a free kill. Now we just finish off with Weaver. Go for the mini because I took some damage. Try to scout for the para that's coming out of spawn. Shoot the para a bit. End up killing her. They're not resetting fully, that's why they're still dying right now. Postpone the mercy because she was flying in, a, in the air. Now we try to finish off the Kiriko because she's taking a duel and we have numbers now, so I don't have to be scared. Even though I don't have any recall, I don't have to be scared. Because we just have more numbers, so I'm, ex I'm expecting my team to help me. I would finish off the Kiriko and the spawn, and we can just recall out and play safe. And then I'm gonna go back to playing above them right here, because only a few of them can contest me. The Kiriko can wall climb, the Fire can fly, and the Diva can fly, so it's only three players that can early contest me. The Diva's bombing, so I'm waiting for a second. And now I'm gonna regain high ground, trying to shoot the Terra a bit. I can even maybe finish her off. Sadly, I overestimate my own abilities, and I get killed by the Terra. Onwards to victory. I'm gonna use a little spot up here to try and get high ground because being above the Pharah is very good because it makes me more leveled with her and if I'm more leveled with the Pharah I'll be having a much easier time to do damage to her. Since I can poke that out a lot I'm gonna go for Mega and since the Pharah died I'm actually gonna go look for a spawn camp on her now. He's walked to cast now so we just look at the straight line out of spawn. Now we just use my blinks to dodge his hinder and we can just go back to the fight now after we spawn camp. Grace is probably one of the best spawn camping characters in the game because you can you have so much mobility. I'm gonna try to dodge the Anna's abilities. She used both her cooldowns, so I'm gonna put a stick on her. Because she was still trying to take the fight even though she had no cooldowns. Then I can use all of my blinks to go over to the Mega because it's the safest option. Since I was really low, I couldn't fight the Kiriko because if she just hit one headshot on me, I would indeed have died. I will try to help my Kiriko with fighting the ulting soldier and he was 1 HP so it's an easy killer. Now I will regain up here trying to scout for anybody I can help. Looks like I will have to try to focus the cash right now, wherever he is. Just think over here. Do a little bit of damage. Go for the mega. Continue shooting the cash since he's getting pocketed and I'm very low HP. It's very dangerous for me right now so I'm gonna blink twice around the corner here to my mercy and get some healing. It was kind of a risky 2v1 I did there because the cast is pocket and uh, he does a lot of damage. Since he used Susu and this Kiriko went over to the soldier, I'm gonna look for somebody else instead since I already know the soldier will have health in his position. We finish off the cast because he was uh, getting pushed by my team. And now I'm just gonna look for the Kiriko, utilizing my blinks to be able to shoot her as much as possible. Use recall because she headshot me once, so I would rather not die, so it's just about playing it safe since I. We have numbers against them. There's no re reason for me to take an unnecessary risk. Here I'm going to start up here on this high ground again, scouting a bit whether they're going right side, left side, or just throughout main. Trying to listen. Listening. Now that it looks like they're about to go high ground, I'm going to shoot them a bit. I can hear the cast is ulting, so I don't want to peek him. Now we shoot the Mara because she's trying to go high ground all alone, so we take the duel with her. Then she trades right into my guild of vision, I can just finish her off. And now I can look for a stick to answer the Ana for example, but it looks like Ana is very low already, so I'm just going to blink twice up to high ground and finish her off. Making it hard for her to do anything about me, but the cast two taps me, here's some nice shots, so I end up losing my pulse bomb and dying. Because I was trying to post bomb him while he was headshotting me, so I ended up losing him. Does look like I still gave us enough numbers for my team to win the fight, which is great. Let's go! Prepare for battle. 
Select your hero. Well, let's go. At such a young age, I hope you remember to take time for yourself. Sometimes, but I have so much to do. That's always the excuse. Is it come with Steve, Echo, Anna, and Senyata? So here in this map, early on Call of Duty, early I'm just gonna roll out throughout this path right here. I can control all the space over here, so nobody wants to take an off angle on my team right now, because then I can contest them. I'm listening a bit, trying to hide, scouting. Doesn't look like anybody's trying to contest the angle, so I'm just gonna go for it and take it, try the trap on my path, poke the backline a bit, make them look at me, waste the time a bit. Since I took a lot of poke, I can just go for the mega instead, and I can just reappear back here, fight the junker a bit, try to dodge by blinking to the side so he doesn't hit any cooldowns on me, while still just. Get poked down on him, doing a lot of damage, end up killing him so I can recall. I over oh, I overextended a small bit so I had to recall. But in the end I'm fine, we try to shoot the edge from the side, but she's walking in a straight line trying to get out. Shoot the baby demon before she gets into the mech. Try to travel. And you see how I'm just going from the side and just annoying them a bit, destroying destroying the focus fire on my team by flanking and taking off angles so they get they, they get split attention. Because my team, they want to look at my team that's main, and I'm just coming from the side, being like super annoying, so they have to look at me. Junkrat is pushing inside, so in instead of fighting the Junkrat inside, I'm just gonna fully disengage the 1v1. I can just, since uh, the, you can now wait for some healing, so I'm just gonna wait until my auto regen kicks in and I'm pretty free again. I'm gonna go down here and contest the Junkrat, because it sounds like he's somewhere down here. So since he's trying to take an off angle on my team, I'm just gonna instantly contest him and make it very hard for him. Do 180 on him, because he was he was trying to predict my pass, so I just blink behind him and deal with him. Then we shoot the edge because she's overextended. Try to finish off the bat because he's just clean up at this point. Now I'm just gonna set up for an early pulse bomb by playing over here at the left side. Right, that was that was a very wild attempt on the Pokemon. I honestly thought the Junkrat would walk towards me, and he ends up hitting me with an ability, so I die. Well played from the Junkrat. I thought he knew I was inside, so I just threw the pulse bomb like straight at him. That was a very bad choice for me, so he punished me for it. Looks like my the fight is equal at the moment, so my team is still very likely to win. So I'm gonna try to help them by pressuring from a different angle, which is now right side. I can try to help focus on anybody that can die, kill the Ana, and I can hit the jump his back from spawn because I saw him die earlier. My Diva. I'm just gonna fight him a bit. I can recall, so I'm sure he doesn't hit me. And I can finish him off slowly. I can go focus the Diva since she's the only one left in the fight right now. One kept her because she was just running out in a straight line. Now we go with this Metra that's trying to steal the card away from us. That's also my job as a tracer because I'm the one that's super mobile. It's my job, I can recall because I was 1 HP and I didn't want to die to the Mario. Yeah, I died to the Mario. Mario orb, so I recall and then I'm gonna steal the card back and just walk. Because we, in push, on push match, you always want the card to be the furthest. And since the Diva is contesting me, I'm just gonna try to waste the time by blinking a bit around and I end up getting hit by the Junkrat because I blinked into the wall instead of blinking out throughout the uh, small window. My plan was to blink out through the window so I could disengage fully and had to waste that time, but I ended up not wasting the time without since uh, the Junkrat hit me. Since we killed the Moira, the fight right now is still winnable. I'm gonna go left side here, see if I can help my Echo survive since my Echo is very low. It doesn't look like anybody trying to kill my Echo, so I can just go back to and contest card. As I sort of said earlier, my job is to contest card on Tracer because I'm so mobile, so I can make it very hard for somebody to 1v1 me on card. Because I can just play around the card and I can survive. Dodge the Diva a bit and just 
make my diva do as much damage to that diva before I take the duel with her. I'm just wasting the diva's time trying to look at me. I can blink over to the left side and I end up hitting a trap that I didn't see, so I'm just gonna recall instantly when I have the opportunities to recall. So now we can focus on the Moira since she has no fade. Whatever she went, I'm gonna cut a both from her because she had no fade. Doesn't look like a hit, so I'll just try to survive behind them. I can, since the Moira pushed me, I'm just gonna two blink away. I'm gonna wait to make sure the diva doesn't chase me instantly. And I can just blink even further away and go for the mini over here. And now I can, now I've actually isolated the Moira, and the Moira is completely alone right now, so I can try to see if I can go for her. Then she left her team trying to, trying to duel me. Doesn't look like I'll be able to catch the Moira in time, so I'm just gonna wait for some blinks. So I have a few blinks, I can start walking, the Moira was hiding around the corner trying to kill me, so I'm gonna recall when I'm low and then chase the Moira, end up killing her. It's about trying to predict where the Moira is gonna fade when she fades, and I predicted she was just gonna fade towards her team, which she did. Now we focus to Symmetra because she is so low and walking all alone without any healing. We focus to Ana and now, then we focus to uh, the Diva now. I'm just get over healed up on my team. Now I'm gonna set up from my left side angle to. Since. Okay, this is very, very push dependent. Like this map on push, since we pushed the car as far as this point, you can see here. Well, I know the fight is probably gonna happen around that point. So I'm gonna set up close to the point from the left side angle here, trying to fight somebody early for the space. Because if we gain the space, we can push the car. If we if we don't gain the space, it's gonna be hard to push the car. I'm gonna touch the Moira off by blinking towards the Mega, and now I'm gonna engage again. But the Junker was hiding around the corner, which I did not see, so I end up dying. That was a well well, well positioned timing for the jump from the junk crab. Since there's still two of my teammates alive, I'm gonna rush back to point to see if this fight is somehow winnable. Since I'm a tracer, I can always disengage again. Looks like my diva died as well, so I'm just gonna fully disengage. And there's no worries about that. Since I have so many blinks. Now I'm gonna fight from the left side, since I know they're gonna be positioned somewhere over at the right side, since it's where they pushed the car. I can look for a pulse bomb or a fight against anybody. So power pressured me a bit, so I'm just gonna wait a second on my regen to kick in and get the heals, and I can go for the Ana in the back line trying to hit a Pokemon on her. That we miss, or uh, she doesn't die, but at least I pressured her a lot. And since the Junkrat is taking a fight with me, I'm just gonna make sure I live above every, any, every, anything else, because I don't have a, I don't have any recall. Once I get my recall back, now I can try to go in again and try to push the Ana, making sure I don't die to the Junkrat that's taking a fight with me. And then I can just go for Ana again. Watch the junk pad. Try to get fully out. I'm probably gonna die to the Diva now since I don't have any resources left. Doesn't look like the Diva ended up killing me, so I'm just gonna go for the Mega. Now I can walk backwards to the fight. Look for any support or anybody I can go for. Since I'm more afraid of here, I'm gonna chase her down, kill her. Then I'm gonna steal the bot if I can. Oh, they're still contesting the bot, so I cannot steal anything. And then we just focus on the Pharah. Can she ult it? I instantly like. I instinctively blinked away since the Pharah was ulting because I don't want to uh, tank face that and then I just recalled back uh, to safety. Since we pushed the bot a bit far again, I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to try to take a fight over closer to the enemies, trying to make it harder for them to deal with my team when my team is this in engaging. You can always see two of them are looking at me from helping my team by by making the enemy team look at me a lot. To the soldier, because she's running at me, so I just disengage back. No, I did recall back to safety after I'm very low. And I'm going to wait around here for a second, seeing if I can bait the soldier to take a bad duel and he ends up dropping from high ground and he's very low. Sadly, I don't finish him off, but... Now I can look for a post bomb. I'm too low, so I end up not post bombing, and I just try to focus on the Moira. The Moira is chasing me. She used to fade, so I just disengage and take a health back. Now I go backwards over here, and I try to find a post bomb pick right now because if I kill somebody right now, it's very hard for them to win the next fight. Oh, the Junkrat is in the spawn, so I'm just gonna go for the Junkrat that's in spawn because he's gonna have a very hard time dueling me. So I end up killing him. Watch the Moira out, we go backwards, and now we can go to the point fighting with an advantage because we have one pick and they don't. Keep the soldier here. Because the soldier is very deep. 
end up finishing off the soldier now i'm gonna choose choose to shoot the barrels and tomorrow's very close and i'm gonna chase the baby diva trying to finish her off and now Dana's the only one left alive so we kill her as well now i'm gonna do the exact same as before i'm gonna set up but this time i want to set up deeper and try to get a pulse bomb off i know the jump crad died late he's on sombra now so he's probably gonna go on me at any point right now but i can try to bait somebody in the dodge around the corner because two of them are fighting me i'm wasting their time making them look at me with the Mara since she's also looking at me try to kill the Mara. i end up using my recall just because i tried to kill her Sombra fighting me as well so we shoot the Sombra and i blink up and try to finish off the Sombra. Then she took a duel where she didn't have a lot of uh, escape routes possible. So, prepare the post bomb to Anna. End up doing a little bit of damage to her with the post bomb, which is great. Now I can just focus the soldier since he's a squishy that goes to him and he's low. When I'm killing him as well. And then I just finish off the baby diva and it should be game. So, you see how much all of them focused me and tried to take angles to kill me? And how I still ended up only having 3 deaths after the whole game. Let's go. Prepare your defenses. Select your hero. Checklist complete. Now it's time for the good bit. Stay sharp. It's harder to keep you alive when you're distracted. No unnecessary risks. Okay, so the combo we have is Sigma, Hanzo, Anna, and Mercy. We don't really have a lot of dark kind of characters or characters that can engage very deep. So I'm gonna have to fight a lot without my team's LOS unless I'm taking duels with the enemy team. And play around pill packs then. I'm gonna start him over at the left side here. I can see they have Sinyata, Reaper, Ana, Orisa. Don't know what the second DPS is. Widowmaker in spawn, so I'm not gonna peek the Widowmaker whatsoever right now. I'm just gonna poke the Reaper because he's trying to take space. So I'm just popping him from an off angle. The reason why I can take this off angle so clearly is because I have a very easy escape route of up top where i can wait for cooldowns links etc looks like they traded off with my widowmaker and my ana oh wait the widowmaker and my ana and since i reaper is pushing i'm just gonna go up and disengage the pull bomb poking down the reaper a bit and we can finish him off because he lost me in the process of dueling me the reason why i was confident in the reaper duel is just because he used some cooldowns and he took a lot of poke damage in engaging me so it's a completely safe duel for me to take because i can always recall and just blink away from him since reaper is very close range target since he tv'd over here again i'm gonna do the exact same thing by disengaging up top taking the health back i can focus him down i can even pull from him now since i saw him use uh, faith but he doesn't have any way of dodging it and i'm just gonna wait a bit for my cooldown i'm actually gonna blink over here and contest the widowmaker since she's high ground up here kill her because she was not aware and then we just focus on the Ana since the Ana is pushing very hard and she's low I'll recall because I took a lot of damage and focus on Sinyata after the Ana I could have reloaded and tried to shoot the Ana instead but it, she was low enough for me just to do the pre melees and she would have died the Reaper is pushing my Mercy over here so I cannot just disengage the duel I have to make sure my Mercy is surviving double blink over here trying to finish off the Reaper since she has no fade and then I can chase the Sinyata and spawn, and I end up getting headshot. So I overextended a bit there, which is not a good look, but shit happens sometimes. He hit a few nice shots and I died. That was some nice headshot from him. 
The good part about this is the Reaper died pretty late, so it doesn't look like they will have too much of an advantage for a long time before I get back. And the Reaper swap to Bastion now. And Bastion is a very good pulse target stick, so I'm actually just gonna try to look for that right now. Wait for the Discord orb to disappear. Put the Zenyatta because he's walking in main. He ends up transcending, so I'm just gonna wait a bit until the transcendence is over. Then the Bastion is pushing me, so I'm gonna try to pulse bomb him. I said, you miss it. I recall because I'm very low. Then I finish on the Bastion. And now I try to look for the Widowmaker. Then she did a lot of damage to me. I wanted to disengage almost the Mega inside there, but she ends up dying instead, so I can stay and just go for this mini right here instead. We go focus on the Moira because the Moira has no fade and she's the only support left alive. And then we also kill the Risa. Since Sebastian walked out very prematurely, I'm just gonna walk up and shoot him a bit. He ends up dying, so I'm gonna take the left side here and set up for the next fight. Inside of this room here. Since the Widowmaker used walls, I have to watch out about anybody pushing me since they now know I'm here. Yeah, they didn't start pushing me, so I'm just gonna fully disengage. Blink over here, try to dodge, end up getting headshot by the Widowmaker. I could have double blinked, which would probably have been way better. But I wasn't 100% certain about the Widow's position, so I ended up dying. Which also, that was a very nice shot from her. I should have played it safer and just double blinked out, or even triple blinked out towards my team, because I took so much initial poke. Then I'm gonna rotate around right side, trying to help my Genji since he's in blade. So I expect him to have done a lot of damage with a few backline targets that I can help him finish off. And now I'm just gonna wait for anybody to try and touch the point, and I'm gonna try to kill the ones that want to touch. Since it's our main objective right now, since it's last fight. Only 5 seconds remaining, so it's just about looking for anybody that can touch the point. Uh, since it's not did so much damage for me, I'm just gonna recall. And try to finish him off since he was gonna be very annoying if he got closer to point. Even though I have no recall and it's dangerous to go there, it's worth it in this scenario because if he's one of the only ones that can touch and I end up killing him, they get no touch and suddenly they don't, don't cap at all, like the round ends. Doctor, are we still meeting for lunch after the seminar today? Seaburn, that was years and years ago. But we had a lovely talk. Oh, I remember now. Uh, birds, wasn't it? Birds and music. Okay, I'm gonna ro roll out from right side here, link over here, and I'm gonna try to fight for the space earlier that I was trying to defend. So now I have a clear flank and a lot of space just free for me since nobody is over here. I can just fight the soldier that's on high ground. I'm gonna blink towards her, go below and take the mega since she did a bit of damage to me. Now I can just regain up here and try to take the space all around them, making it very hard for them to deal with me. I'm listening because I could hear a Widowmaker or the Nuss it wasn't a Widowmaker, it was just somebody else's footsteps. Now I can drop behind them and look at the backline and annoy them a lot and make them waste the resources on me so it makes it easier for my team to push. I try to one-click this Nidata, it doesn't look like I'll be able to, so I just recall out and wait a bit for my cooldowns again. Since I'm now fully healed, I can look to pressure the backline once again. Looking if I have any engagement, like on tomorrow, that's 1 HP, I'm just gonna recall out. But there is a dangerous spot I was in and I don't have to be over exerted because none of them are pushing me. So I can play it safe and we focus on Sinyata while my Sigma is pushing because he realized I was doing a, a lot of uh, attention trade in the backline. We focus on the soldier and we call some low and then we capture the objective. And we pull on my Sigma that's running away. That's why not.
state of the game. Let's go. We're good in Lactica, our first king of the hill, I think. job to get you back alive but stay close to me and we might manage it anyway so we have arisa casualty kiriko and lucio so we have kind of a rush come meaning uh, my team will probably go really hard and pushing the enemy team so my arisa can get close to them and i just gotta try to help her doing that i'm gonna instantly run out right side here and i'm even gonna double blink over here and keep this position here so when the enemy team pushes like the sunrise is going on me i have a lot of space to work with I end up finishing off the Sombra because she still, still took the duel even though I scouted her. Now I'm just going to go up behind the enemy team. Since none of them care about this base, I can just position over here and fight them a lot. Of, I even grab because I can finish off anybody. I actually focus the clean up out of everyone because she's all alone in a very open position. So she ends up dying. Now I can go to the card and focus it while trying to touch the Sombra. So we capture the point now. Sombra's contesting, so we shoot the Sombra. Trying to finish her off. But she ends up translocating in a very obvious spot, so we finish her off, finish the soldier off. Now we just focus the Moira. She's trying to really get out. Recall to make sure she doesn't uh, kill me. Now, I'm, since I'm full bomb, I'm gonna set up the next fight for the pulse bomb. For example, by positioning top right here so I can go behind the enemies when they are about to engage. Now that I have the position where I can just look for both bomb on absolutely everybody, I'm gonna try to do it on the live weaver since it's a guaranteed kill if I hit him. Instead, we just shoot the live weaver a bit, try to both bomb him, but he ends up dropping from his pedal. So I just instead focus him down with my mouse one, try to kill him. Doesn't look like I'd be able to, so I just blink over towards the mega to survive even after the Moira is pushing me a lot. I can just blink away again and go for the health pack. And the Mario just used the fade, so I'm gonna pressure the Mario a bit. Uh, since I took a lot of damage, I'm just gonna fully disengage and wait for my team to regroup since two of my teammates died. I can even contest the high ground because I can hear the soldiers up here. So we try to take the high ground away from her because she's at more of a disadvantageous position if she's low ground. I end up dying though because she hit a bit more shots than I thought she would, and the Pharaoh also shot me at the same time. I went a bit too aggressive, and that's why I died. I could have played it slower and safer with the soldier duel, and I probably would have gotten my recall in time. That's also one of the major mis mistakes I made. I, w I went in on the soldier without having my recall. I was too confident. I'm gonna scout the fair, maybe coming up here. Group up here. Join me. I'm not gonna take the duel since I have took so much probe and I don't wanna waste my recall. So instead, I'm just gonna walk right side here. I can hit the first close, so I'm fighting the fair, trying to poke it down. Actually, in this situation, I'm actually just gonna drop down to low ground and force the car uh, objective, like the point. So the enemies will have to contest me here. Since the soldier slid over to the side, I'm gonna look for a post bomb on the soldier. Sadly, you miss, so I'm just gonna disengage. I end up getting killed by the Pharah that's ulting right in my team. I did a lot of mistakes right there, and it was kind of ugly gameplay to look at. So instead, of, I'm gonna try to have a different, uh, different way of going about right now. I'm gonna try to follow. Either my soldier or my Risa a bit more, or I'm gonna fight the backline more. Since I'm going for the DPS and I'm not getting a lot of value. Except for the Pharah was inting a lot here, I'm just playing on the high ground above them. I can hear the Mara just faded, so we're gonna try to figure out where the Mara is, even double blink to try and commit on her. Because she, I don't want her to get the, her fade back in time. Got the Queen a bit, and she poked me a lot, I'm just gonna recall, and now I can just go aggressive on her because she has no abilities left. 
to try to finish your all. So now we focus the card so we can so we can capture it. And now I'm setting up for next fight. Going up here, trying to figure out where the Pharah is. I can hear her. But she disengaged fully, so I'm just gonna set up on the left side instead. And play over here. Right on this spot and try to listen to where the enemy team is going. Over there. Keep the Pharah a bit because she's right in front of me in the air. And since the Mora and Pharah did a blow poke to me, I'm just gonna go with the Mega Head. Perfect and recall to finish off the Mara because she used her fate to get to me, so she made herself very vulnerable by using her fate to chase me. Trying to listen here, maybe pull from the queen if she pushes me. It doesn't look like she is pushing me. So we'll just poke her down instead. How to dodge the para. I don't actually need recall here. I could have recalled after taking the poke, but my team was ready to heal me, so I just choose not to. And then I just fight the para now, try to dodge her bullets. And now I want to try to finish off anybody. Might be valuable to kill, like the Life Weaver, hold on the Life Weaver, and I go back to point, trying to look for the Moira because she is the only support left alive now, but I killed the Life Weaver. Or oh, actually, we focus the Soldier now, because the Soldier is right in my face. Try to contest the point a bit, living for a long time. I'm actually gonna fully disengage, take the health pack, and wait for my Arisa to touch the point. When they start looking at my Arisa, I'm gonna engage back, try to help my Arisa survive and kill anybody, like the Pharah. We we'll chase the Soldier in a small bit. Recall now because I took a lot of poke and I want to be in a safer position and then I just blink around my Arisa Utilizing her presence And we're not winning the round You see how I'm playing it safe. I'm not taking duels that I'm certain I won't be able to win. I just utilize my team and I look for what they're doing They have this coming so let's give it to them. Let's get the healing ring going, setting my equalizer to absolute destruction. Five, four, three, two, one, round two. Capture the objective. Yeah, I'm gonna go from the left side early because I expect my team to go somewhere push around the main side So I want to take an off angle to split the enemy's resources and attention Trying to get some value by making them look at me My Lucio dies so it looks like we're gonna fight probably five So right now I'm trying to look for any trade value The Moira used to fade so we focus the Moira I even commit by blinking into her and then we finish her off And I just recall back to safety Trying to live after I kill the Moira Gamora wasted her fate at a very bad timing, so I just finished her off. There's no reason for her to fade and yet she did, so she dies because of her. Now we just help my team to capture the objective while we focus out anybody that's trying to disengage, like the soldier. Now I'm gonna go right side since my team is going left side. I'm gonna shoot the soldier that's in the main here, take the health pack when I take a lot of poke. And I can try to look for anybody like soldier here that's a bit unaware about my angle. Shoot him a bit and instead of recalling, I'm just gonna go for the mini health pack over the right side. And take retake the angle over here. Maybe even spawn camp the soldier. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait here and spawn camp the soldier when he comes by. Let's get the Kiriko now because he tried to help the soldier. Both spawn the Baptist. Sadly, don't hit the Baptist, but hit the Thief instead. But since I'm, since all of them chased me, there was a lot of value in trying to both spawn the Bab. I was kind of lucky that I hit the Thief instead. And I can just be happy about it. I'm gonna take left side angle here and pressure. Trying to bait a duel over here. Now I have to try to help my Lucio survive. He ends up dying. There's not a lot I could do about that. And now I can just fully disengage because my team isn't set up anywhere near close to me. And I can go from main now since they're all rotating left side. Actually, it looks like they're going main again, so. I'm gonna go left side instead. I can see that the soldier is far away all alone, so I'm focusing on the soldier. Doesn't look like I'll be able to kill him, so I just recall back to safety and look for a different target I could maybe go for right here. Throw the immortality field. Now we can focus the bad piece, but he's very deep and he has no immortality field. So it's a very good target for me to look at. Blink around the window so I don't get hit by it. Looks like they're all shooting me a lot, so I'm just gonna disengage instead of recalling. Because if I recalled right there, I would have recalled into a very vulnerable position, so instead I try to look for an escape route that is not using my recall. 
We poke the Rizzo down main here and I take a left side angle because I want to bait some of the attention over to the left side so my team has an issue time walking like so. Now two of them are looking at me so my team can walk. Keep the Sojin alert because the Sojin is taking a lot of poke and he's not getting healed. Now we focus the Kripo. We can just use Susu. But without a Susu she dies. And now we can focus the Soldier because he's the only one left alive. Now I'm gonna walk up since it's very uh it's less fight and it's very hard for me to touch right now. I'm gonna look for anybody that might be able to touch. Doesn't look like there's anybody. So Yeah, there's nobody that can touch, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna win the game. Let's go. Okay, we try to focus the Sombra, and then I wait for her to use her abilities. Look, she's completely disengaged. So I'm just gonna help my Doomface try to shoot the Kiriko instead. And we're not finishing her off. Now I'm gonna try to look for the Live Weaver since he's the only other support right now. So my Doomface is going with me, so we try to focus the Sombra now. Actually, let's just capture the objective instead. Now we can finish off the last two players that are left alive. And we can try to figure out where the Sombra is going. Trying to doubt her a bit. Over here. So we chase her down. And kill her. I'm just gonna blink towards the Mega and I can set up for a post bomb early next fight. Oh, you guys are trolling. Kirikos taking a duel with me, so I'm just gonna pay for the health pack and I can continue fighting her since I know the point is now right side. Or right right here actually, the, all of the enemies are gonna come by. So I'm gonna try to look for a post bomb in a in a, in a vision where the Saria cannot uh, bubble it. I'm gonna go for the Sombra, blink over behind the cover so she cannot get the heck off. I'm gonna just blink a bit around her. Maybe I'll use my blinks a bit too defensive right there. And she'll probably end up getting the health pack, so that's a big mistake for me, but now I can chase her down and end up killing her. Now I can just focus on capturing the objective. Focus the Genji because he's awesome, and then I'm just gonna try to look for post bomb while this is happening. Or maybe the Life Weaver, so I'm gonna now blink over to the left side. Trying to scout for the Life Weaver, I can see he's coming over there. So I blink, blink, and then I try to post bomb him. Sadly, I miss, but I end up hitting the Kiriko instead because she walked into my post bomb. And now we chase a bit the Life Weaver, try to see the Pharah. And now I can take a duel with the Pharah since she's playing over here. Take the health bang in the way, so I'm sure I'm top all. Do a little damage, and then I just blink in aggressive against the Pharah and I end up dying because she has a few shots. I overextended a lot, so uh, he won the duel. If I played a bit more patience against the Pharah, I probably would have won that duel. I'm gonna fight, fight the Pharah over here at the left side. So I can help my Widow survive. And since my Widow is pretty deep, I'm gonna try to gatekeep her, gatekeep her a bit and make it hard for them to kill her or do anything about her. Now I'm just poking the Roadhog to try to build my up quickly. And it looks like they're contesting the objective. I actually thought they wouldn't be able to contest it, but now that they're contesting it, I'm gonna instantly try to look for an engage in the backline. Not using too many things and the engagement. So I always can blink back to safety if I have to. Trying to figure out who my Doomfist is going on so I can support him. And now we're shooting the Kiriko instead because she's all along on card. And then we flee with the Life Weaver because his flower cooldown ended. So we shoot the Life Weaver. He has another flower, so we shoot the Kiriko instead now again. Trying to kill her. 
now we focus the maid because she has no ice block. Now the road horse because she's the only one, one of the only people left alive. Now we go towards the next point. Now I'm sort of trying to expect where the enemy team is going to come from. Since my team looks like they might be fighting over there, I'm actually just going to go and capture the objective. Because since my team is fighting them, I'm pretty certain they won't come to point. Even though my team is fighting 4v5, getting the point here is the major focus. I could have fought the enemy team with my team, but it was, I was just already too far away. So I instead just kept the objective and set up. Maybe try and help my Doomfist or just look for a trade for next fight. Even though my team is fully dead, I'm gonna look for a pick because now it's gonna be hard for them to win the next fight since the Marwa just died because my team is gonna respawn faster than the Marwa. So the Marwa faded, that's why I went for the post bomb, and the Kiriko was very far away so I didn't expect her to susu it. Poking a bit up here, I can hear that the Mei is coming towards me so I'm gonna take a duel with the Mei, that's gonna be fine. She's pausing a duel very hard with me, she uses an ice block. Since she has no ice block, it's a very winnable duel for me so I'm just gonna destroy the Mei. Ice block, and now I'm gonna chase the May a bit, seeing if I can kill her. Doesn't look like I'll be able to, so I'm just gonna recall out and try to get back to safety this way, taking the mini on the way, and waiting for my team to regroup because two of my teammates died. On me. Now I'm trying to figure out who my Doomfist is trying to go on, so I can go on the same target with him, going the soldier, so we shoot the soldier. I'm just gonna recall since it's good on damage, but the soldier now dying, so it's completely fine for me to relax and chill for a second and wait a bit for cooldowns. And Doomfist is fighting the Moira, so I try to hold and fight the Moira. And then we just shoot down the May because she's very low, and since the May is an ice wall, I'm just gonna try to help anywhere else I can. I'm trying to figure out who's the best one to shoot. Killing the Moira now because she's ulting, trying to force a fade. Since she has no fade now, I'm actually just gonna shoot her because she might be able to die yeah, like, just like that. And then we focus the Roadhog instead. My Doomfist is looking at him, and then we just shoot the May now, trying to finish her off while trying to dodge the Soldier Visor. The reason why I didn't go on the Soldier there, even though he was ulting and the May wasn't, it was because two of my teammates were already looking at the Soldier and he was just running in, so I expected my team to be able to handle it, and I just look at the uh, May instead because she has no Ice Blood. So I'm scouting right here because it's last fight coming up, it's last fight territory, so I'm scouting on whoever might be able to touch the point so I can poke them. Looks like they're not coming from high ground right now, maybe they are actually coming from high ground, but it looks like the May will be trying to touch, so I'm shooting the May forcing an ice block. I'm just gonna wait now because I don't have to recall, I can just wait for healing, and then we try to shoot on the May now that she used the ice block, and it doesn't look like they'll be able to capture or touch the point, so we win the game. Yo hey guys, we got a game, let's go. Prepare for battle. Select your hero. It's time to save the world. Particle cannon online. Let's run them over. Five, four, three, two, 
It depends on what you're playing against. Okay, so here we have Charia with Genji, we have Mercy and Moira. I want to try to follow up my Genji a lot on when he he wants to dash a target or go in and also play around by Saria because she will probably be able to bubble me. So the Rhino pushing a lot left side, I think you can disengage on the right side instead. I'm running to Lucio because it's very deep in my team. Got you with the Ash a bit. Now I see there's a Sodian as well, so I'm just gonna play all the way around them and try to annoy them. And well, we got a few picks very early on, it's just about uh, being certain we can kill the rest of them. So I'm just making, setting up the kills. So. Here there's some, some nice spots in this map, so I can blink up here and blink up here. I can even jump all the way up here if I don't mess it up. <laughs> I don't mess it up, I can think all the way and stand up here and scout a lot. See on what angle I want to go. I can see my Genji going from the left side, so I can even think up here and look down on the enemies like the Ash that's just standing here that's very unaware. And I just try to finish off anybody else that's trying to disengage right now, like the May. I just heard her use Ice Block, so she has not Ice Block right now. And then I can recall because I took it out of poke and we can try to focus down the rest of them. The Ana is very alone, so we might go in the Ana, but since we ran pin, the direction we don't go for the honor right now i'm actually gonna go rotate around the left side with the crop turret a bit try to destroy it and finish off the torque because it's very low now we just try to finish off the Anna because she is uh, trying to get out can we blink up here and play above them finish off the Anna like that and blink up here again and we've got a boss on the lucio and i'm sticking him which is great and then i can just finish off the ryan now but she has no support left alive. Now I'm just gonna fully disengage because there's no reason for me to stay in any longer. And I can set up again on the high ground for the next fight. And since they have a Pharah now, it's actually very good for me to start off on the high ground. They don't, leave, they don't have a Mercy or anything that can heal the Pharah too much, so I can use a lot of my forwards. I'm just poking down the Pharah, doing a damage to her. Since she was just flying, I was being aware, I ended up killing her, and I think away from the Reinhardt that's pinning, and I just rotate around them, shooting the Torque that's chasing me, and then we finish up the Ana now. And I even focus the Reinhardt because she's the only one left alive right here. He pins my Sari all the way to the spawn, so I'm gonna try to help my Sari as much as I can. Think around the cross and try to kill the her, kill the Ryan that's in grab, and we go for a full form of the Torbjorn. And it doesn't look like there's anybody that can touch the point. Okay, actually, there is. The Lucio touched the point. He did a crazy rollout and he beats himself on point. What a hero. That's crazy. So we just focus on the Lucio since he's the only one left the point. Try to predict his pathing and we kill him. Now the Sombra is touching, so we shoot the Sombra. We just focus it down. Try to figure out what she is going towards. And finish her. Now we focus the ball because he's touching the point. Actually, I'm going to switch my attention over to the Torb, since the Torb is engaging and he has no overload now. So we can just finish him down, then we just focus the ball when he's coming back on point. With Lucio instead now, that is squishy instead of the ball we can focus. And the ball is mellowed. We shouldn't normally focus him, but he's the only one left alive. So we just focus him down, and he's a dying. Zero. Yeah, the stick on the Lucio is just about trying to predict his pathing, like where he's gonna continue wall riding towards. And I saw, and it, it looked like he was gonna continue wall riding towards uh, the specific path with, where I threw the pulse bomb, and th that happened as well. So he ends up getting stuck. Yeah, it is a new account. Push your limits. This is a completely fresh account. For the unranked grandmaster. Hello there. Okay, so here I'm gonna roll out on the top. This is a funny spot that I don't see a lot of other tracers using, so I'm gonna try to show it to you guys because I like this spot personally. I'm just linking up here. Now I can just double blink up here. Okay, there's a Lucio, so we try to shoot the Lucio up here. Making sure I don't take too much damage, I'm gonna recall. Since it did a lot of damage to me, I'm just gonna attack with my team, wait for some healing. Now we can continue focusing down the Lucio. Oh, I hit my fucking top over with the right side. But we continue focusing like Lucio ends up dying, so we just focus the ball because I can clear the ball very easily and I'm very... Tracer's very high mobile, so it's very easy to chase the ball for Tracer, so it's good for me to look at the ball usually. At least early fire. You always want to go for squishies, like low HP targets, usually the backline first. 
But the tracer is sometimes good to go for the ball early so we cannot set up. Now I can show you guys the spot which I was talking about before. Just blinking up here, then double blinking up here, and then you can just jump across and suddenly access their high ground. Like I said, it was nothing. So I'm just gonna look down, see the Cassidy, and we'll focus on the Cassidy. Using cover when I reload. Maybe even though he hinders me, I can just hide. And then we pick and then kill him. I don't even have to use recall or anything because I'm gonna also regen the rest of my HP back over time. I'm gonna go to the point, fight the enemy, the Ana is on a well, so we can kill her. Now we're fighting the Lucio. We focus him down, he ends up hitting a few shots on me, so I die. That's a bit of a too aggressive fight for me. I should have played it safer and blinked in a position where I was more likely to live, but I just messed it up. Now my melee is my melee is bounded to my button on the side of my mouse. Not my not my scroll wheel. I'm gonna blink above here again so I can easily access the back line if they were high ground, but they're not high ground. So I'm just gonna drop, I can hit the Cassidy's onto Since he's high nooning, I'm just gonna full bomb him. And then I can try to help my Genji fight the soldier. And now the soldier died, I'm just gonna look for any other squishies left alive, like the Ana, focus her down, and then we focus the ball, blink it first so we don't get people off the map. Now we focus the Lucio, because he's alive, and it's only support left. So now the ball is the only one. And we just finish off the ball. I wait for the passive region or my supports to heal me and now instead of trying to set up closer for the next fight i'm just going to position myself on points since they will have to touch it and we can see the lucio coming to touch we just got to focus on the lucio he ends up getting a beat off instead of dying which is sad and i get one shot by the reaver which is unlucky is that unfortunate no, i should have blinked away from the reaver but i didn't and i'm getting rest on mercy so i'm just going to focus on the squishies left alive or the ball that's in the ground we just focus the ball even go mid fire trying to hit a Pokemon on the Ana, so I had missed, but we still end up killing her because I hit all of my bullets because she was standing still. And now we end up winning the fight and winning the game. Prepare to attack. Select your hero. Let's go. So good. Jungle Town is the next map. One thing to explain about Tracer Blinks is you always want to- Okay, there's a Widowmaker left side I gotta watch out for. I can actually just go and finish off since- Okay, she blinked, she, she grabbed a lot. Of. One thing about Tracer Blinks is you always want to blink in a position that's safe and a position that the enemies do not expect, so it takes a long time for them to set up to try and deal with you. I'm just gonna fight this Lucio over here to the left side since he's very deep, but I don't want to chase him too much because the real target I want to go for is actually the Widowmaker. Sounds like she's very far away though, and the soldier and Lucio are very pushed out, so I'm gonna blink over here to try and dodge the Widow's LOS. Since the cubicle shooting me, I'm also going to disengage her a bit, and then I'm just going to look for an engagement of the widow, maybe. Widow maker is on here, so we engage on her. Blink across here. 
track her down. Oh, he's tracked the Kiriko, blink towards her. Try to dodge her a bit with the 80-80 movement while blinking into positions where it's hard for her to hit me. And we finish her off. Because she has no cooldowns left, then we focus the soldier, dodge his helix. And we just finish him off. I'm gonna blink towards over here, trying to chase the ball when he's trying to disengage. Maybe even body blocking so he cannot use his uh, grapple. Here there's also a nice spot where you can walk up here and then double blink or even use one blink and, and get up to the high ground. I can fight the Widowmaker early because I expected her to be there and I can even chase her since she was very low. Doesn't look like she will die though so I'm just gonna live instead and I don't even want to use my recall. I can just survive. I can blink towards the solar trying to kill him while blinking and dodging the Widowmaker. Another really important thing about blinks is when you're fighting a Widowmaker you always want to blink right before she's about to shoot. Because if you always do that, it's very hard for her to hit you. It's, it's somewhat of a like balance and feeling when you think she's about to shoot. So when she's just about to shoot, you blink because then she will miss, right? Unless she is just, doesn't shoot at all and then repositions, but then you just blink again. And you can time it in a way where you use a waste of time alone. So I can try to display it right here by going up towards the wooden maker, blinking because she's about, right about to shoot. And I can finish her off now that she doesn't have any help in her duel at all, and I can blink towards the soldier. I don't want to pull bomb him because Cesario is close to him and she probably has a bubble for him. So instead I want to rotate over here, trying to scout for the backline while making sure the Widowmaker isn't shooting me from spawn. So if I the Kiriko, the Kiriko is doing some poor movements, so we end up killing her. And I go for the Widowmaker and spawn again. Look, she's right about to shoot, so I blink, and she's right about to shoot, so I blink. And it becomes very, very hard for her to hit me. And I can play very safe like that. And then I can just go for the soldier now that is about to clean up. And we finish this soldier off. And now we just focus on It doesn't matter that I shoot the bubbles right now because she's the only one left alive. So me shooting the bubbles doesn't matter because then I'm breaking them. Or I completely miss my pulse bomb. That sucks. I I should have hit the pulse bomb way better because yeah, I have no susu and I had no bubbles left. So it would have been a very good pulse bomb to hit. I just positioned it very incorrectly. I expect it would have to be somewhere over here, right? Over towards this position. I'm going to double blink over here to make sure she can't see me. By using cover of the map and the route around this corner, I want to destroy the venom mine and then blink once, blink again, blink again, and get behind her. Since she did a lot of damage to me, I'm just gonna fully disengage and I'm gonna go bottom underneath because I expect her to come through here trying to take the health pack because it's the nearest health pack. Now, when I poke down anybody else, I can finish off down on point, but it looks like some of my teammates died, so it's not a great. Uh, it's not super winnable right now at this moment in time. I can pull up on my life weaver, so I'm gonna use two blinks to get back in because I knew the Lucio was low. So we fight the Lucio. I even blink towards him, dodging the Saria. Going for the Kiriko now because she's the other nearest switch I can go for while I rotate towards the health pack so I can take it because I took a lot of poke damage. And then I can rotate to the high ground trying to contest the Widowmaker yet again. Figure out where she is. Around. Go for the Kiriko instead of the Widowmaker. Listening a bit. It's a Rico second duel with me, I'm gonna shoot her and finish her off because she just walked on me. I'm gonna look for the Widowmaker, I can hear she's tough. And I just again try to do the thing with blinking about when she's just about to ready to shoot. Now I can fully just commit on this duel right here because the Widowmaker doesn't have any other cooldowns left. Now I'm gonna blink towards the health pack, take it and then try to finish off anybody else. Since we've lost a few fights now where I pressured that they're backline a lot, I'm gonna try to bait the backline by progression card, linking over to the health pack and then disengaging, waiting for my team and I, we can, instead of going for the Widow this fight, maybe go for the Saria, since the Saria is not really dying a lot. My team has an, a hard time dealing with her. I can even go for the Lucio because the Lucio is very deep in our spawn right now. So I'll go to watch him, shoot him and finish him off because he was very unaware about me. Since the video maker is a bit close, I want to scout out where she is, and I can now go for the Saria and pressure her a lot, so she won't be able to look at my t as, at my team as much. That's the nice thing about Tracer. Even though we lost a few fights where my team lost to their Saria, I can just shoot her next fight and make her look at me, and she will get less value. Try to finish off the Widowmaker because the Widowmaker was running a straight line. Try to post bomb the Symmetra because the Symmetra was uh, the best post bomb target right there because it was hard for the Saria to save her bubbles, to bubble the Symmetra. And the Kiriko was a bit further away, so we go for the Symmetra. He also doesn't have any movement abilities. Uh, other than Teleporter, which she clearly didn't have down. Since the Widowmaker used walls, I'm gonna double blink over towards the high ground, making sure she cannot see me. 
crouching a bit here. Then I'm gonna wait for my blink so I can blink again towards a position where she can't see me. And now that I got way closer to her, I can actually blink down here. Try to scout for her. Looks like she dis she's disengaging, so I'm just not gonna peek her at all. Since the make is really far away, she's not gonna get a lot of value from my position, so eventually she will walk up again, so I don't need to go very deep for her right now. I can just poke her team and build my post bomb again. Shoot the Saria because she's very low. Try to poke her down, make them use Susu. Which is great, and I can try to scout over the middle maker. She's still playing really far back, so I can still get position in the high ground to spread the turrets so they're not annoying for my team. Focus is Metra because she's low and she's burning. Focus is Saria now because Saria is all left alone. And she ends up dying. Focus the Kiriko because she teleported in. Now I can try to scout for the widow maker, blink in a pattern that's hard for her to, to react to. And we finish her off because she was still staying out while her team was dead. Now I'm going to scout for the right side spawn here because I can both see the right side and the left side from this position. I can see Lucio is going very deep so we try to shoot the Lucio. I can see the Widowmaker set up very far back so I'm going to run my best to dodge her a bit while wasting the time. I don't have to push her yet because she has a beat so she's not killable. Now she's killable because the beat ran out. I can shoot her. Don't end up hitting her a lot so I'm just going to recall because I became low and then I'm going to shoot the Hawk instead because he's discarded. I can shoot the Kiriko because she teleported to the Roadhog. And we kept it. In charge. Don't forget that. Five, four, three, two, one. Attackers incoming. I'm gonna start over here at the right side, trying to scalp anybody wanting to take the off angle over here, and also seeing what the enemy team is playing. My diva goes very aggressive and ends up losing her mix, so I'm just gonna go a bit closer, trying to look for some kind of trade, scouting with the Widowmaker's position. I just have to stay in this position right now because there's not a lot of other stuff I can do unless I want to 1v1 the enemy team. And the Widowmaker set up on the high ground and she just took some damage by my Widowmaker, I'm gonna blink towards the Widowmaker and shoot her. With the Mercy flew over to try and help her, I wanna try to fight the Mercy, but the Mercy hit a lot of shots on me, so I couldn't really finish her off or stay in the duel. And since I don't recall, I have to chill for a second and not play too aggressive, I have to scout out where the Widowmaker is. Trying to kill her, double blink over the left side of the Widowmaker because it's hard for her to reposition her crosshair fast enough to deal with it. And then I'm just gonna go a bit closer, trying to shoot on the enemies. And I can shoot her the turret, or kill the turret gun, I'm gonna recall because it took a lot of damage. I'm still gonna position around the high ground up here because it's very hard for me to deal with me. I do have to watch out about the Widowmaker coming back from spawn, so I'm positioning myself to the left side instead. Because in this position, the Widowmaker cannot see me. And we focus on the Lucio because he's just in the front and he's very low. Let me just shoot down the back line, try to focus the Mercy, even post bomb. I end up getting hit, body shot by the Widowmaker because uh, she was expect or she was waiting for me to blink out, and that was a nice shot from her. I could have been faster and did post bomb that would probably have resulted in me living, but I was too slow. Looks like we'll lose this point. I'm just gonna camp the high ground here early and I'm probably gonna disengage pretty quickly since two of my teammates just died and got bad spawn. Even though they used, um, yeah, they used walls, so I'm just gonna fully disengage and wait for my team to regroup. Goal. 
But since my team is just about ready to group up, I'm gonna scout a bit over here because I want to bring towards their high ground so I get an off angle and pressure them. I'm waiting a bit now and I see the Widowmaker pushing up there. So I'm gonna blink towards the right side once the Sigma drops his shield. Now I can blink towards the right side, fighting the Widowmaker. I can try to dodge her a bit, making her waste time. Since she has a pocket, it's actually a, a positive trade I'm doing right now. I'm making two of them look at me even though I'm only one person. I blink out towards the Widowmaker when she's just about to shoot. And I can survive it and keep pressuring them. I don't really have to do a lot of ult right now. I can just make the mercy waste of time. She ends up dying because she gets hit and overextends. Now I can drop position over here and go for the Widowmaker that's just waiting down here trying to shoot my team. She goes to the high ground, so I end up not focusing her. I go for the Torbjorn instead. Then she's low. Again, I'm beating, so I'm just gonna keep shooting them. I'm gonna dodge the Widowmaker again, dodge her again. I'm gonna cling towards her and try to finish her off. I can recall because I took a lot of poke damage and I can poke one because the Lucio is close and I want to finish him off. Since I didn't have any recall, it was kind of risky for me to die, so I committed my poke bomb just to make sure I live. I can finish off the Moira because she's the only one left alive. Doesn't look like I'll be able to kill her because she uh, healed herself. So I can just disengage instead and set up for the next fight. And here the Widowmaker's top right left, so I'm just gonna blink from the right side to the. Also to the Widowmaker to get ready to deal with her. I can even blink behind them trying to shoot the Moira out of spawn. Recall because she took a lot of damage. Blink in, finish off the Moira and then finish off the Widowmaker because she was just standing still and waiting. I can fully disengage now, even away from the Torbjorn, back to my team because I'm low and I have no resources. And I can save by my Life Weaver, which is great. And here the Lucio is going to the car, so we just think to watch the Lucio finish him off because he is 1v5ing. Hit the Widowmaker's top right again, maybe even bottom right. Looks like it's top right, so I'm just gonna blink across here, trying to fight her, deal with her, and end up killing her. Now I can try to look for the Moira, that's the one left alive. It's a bit too deep, so I'm just gonna recall back and play high ground instead. Here I'm gonna try to set up my pulse bomb for next fight on probably the brick that they now have instead of Moira or the Torbjorn, because those are the easiest targets in the front line to pulse bomb. So I'm gonna blink from the right side across here again. Whenever they're about to walk, so right around now, I can blink. I can blink over here, try to hit a post bomb, then we call out to make sure I survive. And shoot the Lucio because he's close shooting the team from over here. Try to figure out where he's gonna come from, blink downwards, and just finish him off because he's very low now. Looks like he was able to dodge me though. So now I'm just pushing a bit closer, trying to make them waste a bit of time. I can even just set up again on the high ground, getting ready for the next fight. I can blink over to the right side here, pressuring the enemy team. I end up getting hooked. I was not expecting the Willow to hook, which was kind of stupid of me because of course he's gonna try to hook me and I die. I just get a bit too sloppy and a bit too confident, thinking I was invincible for a second, but I wasn't. So we killed the Widowmaker and killed the Brick and the Lucio, so it's a one fight for us, so I can just try to get it back into the fight and help my team clean up anybody else so they don't get traded. We can chase the Roadhog, just don't want to get alive, just going to trap. Throw the turret as well. And I can set up high run again, trying to build my post bomb for next fight. The Lucio is bottom right all alone, so I'm actually going to just go take a duel with him. And since he died, I'm just gonna go back high ground and try to get the get a Pokemon off the next fight. If Amara is fighting the Widowmaker, I'm gonna go from the left side over here, trying to help her fight the Widowmaker. And I'm killing the Widowmaker, so I'm just gonna dodge the Roadhog that's now looking at me and just waste his time by making him chase me around. Recall because he's just about to shoot me. I can think over here, both bomb him, but he has no cooldowns left, so he will probably die with the Pokemon. And then just disengage after. Now I'm gonna focus the brick because she's all and running down into the enemy team or into my team and she ends up dying and focus the Lucio now because she's the only one left on target. I'm also gonna have to deal with the Widow by blinking up here and then focusing down the Widow making the Torbjorn and now nobody of them can touch and we win the game.
prepare to attack. Select your hero. Let's go. Cheers, love. It's time to save the world. The eye will not fail. The hand will not flinch. <laughs> more to do, more to learn. crazy thing you've seen as a doctor well there was one pilot who was lost in time all oh, right <laughs> that was an adventure sorry about that don't be you were worth it hi five four three, 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 three let's go with saria echo mercy and brigade i gotta utilize my brigade's pack a lot to take uh, more hardcore off angles than we'll be able to if i did not have a brigade the early game i'm just gonna pull one unfortunate off angle as soon as i can so i'm just gonna go take the off angle over here to the left side since he's really free try to dodge the sword and rail and shoot a break when she's trying to disengage the mercy when the bit deep trying to help her so i'm gonna see if i can finish off the mercy doesn't look like i'll be able to so i just blink backwards take the health pack and then wait a bit for some more blinks while i continue my off angle and make them look a bit at me making them waste some time on shooting me Shooting the mercy now, taking the soldier because she's very low, and we just track down the soldier and track down the mercy, and it looks like we win the fire. You see how I'm just taking the space and I'm playing it safe? So I enable my team a lot when I do that. I chase the soldier and spawn, and she is uh, all alone. Then I'm finishing my ball. Now they're spawning over here, so probably they're gonna rotate either towards here or they're gonna swap their spawn. So let's see what they do. If they end up staying, I might have to use my force bomb to get a kill on them. But the soldier is going very deep trying to deal with me. I shoot her a bit and do a bit of 180s on her and then I'm killing her. But she hasn't did a lot of damage to me, so I'm just gonna blink towards the mini over here. I also gotta watch out for the soldier coming back from spawn, so I'm actually just gonna wait here. Looks like he actually ran underneath and he's already back with his team, so I'm just gonna go over here with the soldier because he's trying to get out. With the Ana now because she's the only support left alive. I can go over here. Wait a second. Now I can wait for some healing. So I'm waiting for my brick to come over to me. And since she can heal me now, I can again take a bit more aggressive space. There's a nice little spot here we can jump up. Sorry, it sadly misses a grab, but shit happens. So I'm just gonna stay around over here. And I know they want to come up uh, through this high ground right here. So I'm just waiting for them to do it so I can get an easy stick onto them or shoot them when they will try to do it. And then saying hello to them because they're trying to shoot me through a glass wall. They can see me. But I'm not wasting a lot of time right now since we are pushing the payload. It's, it's not too much of a waste. I'm just kind of testing this angle right here because they want it at some point. Like the Ana is trying to get right now. I just pulled bomb and she ends up walking into it. So she dies. Now I'm just gonna wait for a second. And I'm gonna now go further and try to deal with the Shinjata that's uh, over here by blinking around him, making them all rotate in a very unfortunate way for them. Finish off the Shinjata, then we call and shoot the Sodium because the Sodium is low. I can blink over to the health pack, take it, and then try to peak my support. And now focus on the Sodium and the Ana, waiting a bit for my supports to heal me because I don't want to take a duel when I'm very low. Lock them a bit, make them waste time looking at me. The soldier here because the soldier is very deep. Finish off the soldier. Soldier, but disengage because it's sent transcendent. So I just do a pair thing and disengage since they use a visor very close to me. I'm just gonna go all the way over high ground and completely alert him. We try to look for the backline instead. We can try to shoot the Ana because she was scoped in main. And they weren't aware about me being high ground. I can blink over here, blink again, then post bomb, try to hit the Sinyata. I said I miss, but. I can make up for it with making with tracking him because he ends up walking in a straight line just because of the post bomb. Uh, since he has to walk away from it, he has to walk in a straight line to dodge it. Now I just gotta survive by playing a bit still, recalling just to make sure that I don't take any more poke and die. And I can try to fight off the soldier over here. Let's see who's trying to get out. And it's just about surviving. Now I can blink up to watch this high ground and play over here from another off angle. 
Well, my team is gonna play main. I'm just gonna take an offhand over here, making them look at me. I can fight the soldier in a bit here, take the health pack, blink out, and just waste the time a little bit. Gain some ulting, so I'm just gonna go back high ground and completely not peek her. Then it sounds like she's not down here anymore. I can go down and look for the support. The soldier is here, trying to take this space, so I fight him a bit, take the lift because I don't want to take the duel anyway, since she had a lot of healing. And I can drop down now after my Saria grabbed because some of them must be low. Like the Lowry doesn't look like I'll be able to kill her, so I'll just disengage and go back to the high ground. Just making sure I survive and I don't die. I'm trying to figure out what my next move is. The best move right now probably is just to wait for my Saria to come back. I can pull the soldier because he's trying to contest me on the high ground. End up trying to pull palm him, making him run away, so I kill him. Then I just focus the Kiriko because she teleported to the soldier, just doing some movement and went hitting a bit. I wanted to try to recall that, but I didn't, so I died. The Kiriko hit a shot and milled me, so I died. I could have recalled it and it probably would have been safer, but I missed it up. Now we can focus the Ilari because she's pretty far up. And instead we just focus... Uh, instead we just focus the Ramakta because he's very deep and he ends up dying. So now we focus the Ilari since she's trying to disengage, link behind the soldier, dodge his abilities, then we recall out and we go back into the... trying to finish off the rest of the squishy targets since the tank died. Doesn't look like I'll be able to kill the soldier, so I just disengage and play with my post bomb now. Play a bit close around this corner right here. I can contest the soldier so he cannot go on my backline. Try to dodge his helix and I'm not dodging it so I have to recall. And since he is ulting, I'm just gonna fully disengage. I might even try to finish him since he I just came from around the corner since he wanted to walk this path. I destroyed the Larry pylon and then I can just dodge a bit here. Try to finish the P4. And I can survive a bit. I'll control the Larry since the P4 is dead. And just think towards the health pack who's surviving and then waiting for my team to regroup. Now I'm gonna look for a post bomb. Since two of them are already pushing me, I'm just gonna waste the time by going up high ground and completely dodging them, waiting for a bit of support. And then I can now go look for a post bomb on, for example, the Cassidy, because the Cassidy is very far to pick up. I'm gonna do it on the Illari instead, because the Illari all used the cooldown and had to disengage very quickly, so it's very obvious what pathings you're gonna take. Took a lot of damage, so I'm just gonna recall it. And now I'm gonna look to follow up my Risa, because he's ulting, and we can finish the repo off, because he's just alone on our backline without any fade. And now since they're really desperate to touch the point before we capture it, I'm just gonna go through the Lauren spawn to make sure she does not touch. Yeah, one thing, it's always good when you're fighting a Kubiko, especially on Tracer, to aim for her legs because her legs have a, hit a bigger hitbox than her head. So even if you have good tracking, it's sometimes way better to go for the legs since a lot more of the Tracer bullets will hit the legs than they will even if you track the head perfectly. Hey, it's time to save the world. Not all of us are scientists, but that's no reason to be careless. What's up? Hey, uh. Well, I would have no reason to do this if I'm not if I'm not trying to make this educational. Then I would have no reason to do it. It doesn't satisfy me to play against players that aren't the same level as me but it satisfies me to be able to teach people how to play better and learn the game more so that's why i'm doing this so if i didn't make it educational it wouldn't be fun so here at the start i'm going to position over on this right side room because i can contest a lot of the back line throughout this room and i can also create a nice off angle and make them waste time looking at me I can contest anybody that's trying to go through here. I shoot just the Ramatka a bit. Trying to make sure nobody's pushing me. I can hear that the Tracer might be going behind us, so I'm gonna try to find the Tracer and fight her a bit. Then the recall. I also, I like, that's very important to notice right there. I stole the Mecha from her so she wouldn't be able to take it mid-duel. So I took it instead, leaving her with less resources than me. 
I'm just gonna wait for healing, then I'm gonna fight the Moira over to the left side here, or right side here. Then she was all alone, and then I can just set up again inside of the room. The reason I went to fight the Tracer is because the best way to deal with a Tracer is having a, tr a Tracer fight the other Tracer. So when she was trying to walk on my backline making space, I just walk on her and make it very hard for her to do anything in my backline. I just kill the Tracer because she took a very aggressive duel and overextended while having low HP. And I'm just gonna wait a bit for healing now, and then we can even drop down and push now because two of them have died, so it's just clean up at this point. And use the Moira. I hope they get a bit out since I got low. Fight the Tracer a bit early on here, even pushing further, taking the health pack from her so she can't take it again. Trying to wait for the Tracer to maybe take a duel with me. The tracer. Now she's trying to take an off angle again, so I just go and contest her instantly. So she wastes her time. And I take the health pack so she can't get it. And now she overextended and she has no recall while I have recall. So I'm completely fine. Even if she post bombs me, I can just recall her. And here I can shoot the cast. I can even try to post bomb him. Sadly, I miss. And but he ends up dying anyway because my bed has LOS on him. I can fully focus on the Kiriko and the Moira and the Zermatra. You see how annoying it is to put the tracer when I when I when I contest her like that because it's in my space, it's in my team space, so I will have way more healing than she will. Because my support can actually see me. You can say if to teach you guys more about tracer and understanding of tracer. The mistake the enemy tracer is doing is she's setting up in a place where I have more health than she has. And she's not forcing me out before trying to get into the space. Then she's fighting me from high ground, so I just take a duel with him. He has no defect and no dash now, so I can just track him down and melee and recall. Commit all of it to the duel. And now I can just look down from the high ground and poke down anybody else that should maybe die, like the Mora or the Rain or the PV4. I can even do a like kind of ego move and, and blink towards the spawn, trying to walk to the tracer here. And I can set up from the right side again. And then the tracer is going right side again, so I'm just going to set up to deal with her. Looks like she's not going yet. Now that she's in, I'm just gonna go for her and she ends up using recall, meaning I have more cooldowns on her, so she takes a duel. I'm at this at an, at an advantage. I can hear the castle going over at the side, so I'm just gonna post bomb him trying to kill him, but I'm lucky he got Susu, so I'm just gonna try to survive instead. Since the Kiriko shooting me from behind, I'm gonna have to try to disengage by recalling and trying to live here. I can just fully disengage. Because otherwise I would die. And they ended up using a lot of time to look at me, so it's not the worst trade-off ever, but it is very winnable for them now, just because I couldn't deal with any any of them, because I got pressured so much. That is what they should have done in any of the earlier fights if they wanted to deal with me more. But now I'm just gonna focus on the Kiriko, since she's low, she's a support, and the Mario dies as well, and now she has the rain left, and we can just kill him. You see how it's more important that I live than me being able to contest them Guys, counter picking Overwatch is the easiest way to match in Overwatch, but it's not about counter picking. Overwatch is, is when Overwatch works well, it's not about counter picking. Alright, let's go. Let's game today. Get the watch point Gibraltar. Gibraltar.
All right, then. Test me. What happens if somebody picks Tracer? Then I'll just ask them kindly to not play Tracer. And if they don't swap at all, I'm just gonna leave the game. For... Before the game starts. So here early I'm just gonna go for the card and position. Watch the Brawls is one of those maps where Tracer is probably the best character in the game to contest the card. So you just want her to force the card all the time. Total drop here main, so I'm just gonna try to fight him a bit because he's in a disadvantaged position now that he's not on high ground. It will be harder for his supports to heal him. I end up doing some nice tracking and kill him, so I can go for the health pack now. I can try to survive. I'm not fighting this Doomfist, he disengages, so I'm just gonna disengage myself. Try to shoot the Tracer a bit so she cannot deal with me. Try to finish up the Sangata because it's low. Finish up the Tracer as well. Dodge the Doomfist punch and shoot the Mara a bit. And then I can just go back to the card now. You see how my target focus made it really easy for me to deal with everything they did. I was conservative and, and used my cooldowns correctly so it was hard for them to deal with me. Here, since I'm post bomb early, I'm gonna set up on the high ground because I have a better vision and more mobility, or more, more chances for mobility to be able to get my post bomb on. For example, when we cast us all alone up top high ground here, I can just link them towards him. I actually don't need the, my post bomb since he's already dead. He took a lot of damage and he got a mind game from a bit. And then I'm just gonna blink out now towards the health pack because I took a lot of damage from the Moira. I'm gonna wait a bit for a few cooldowns before I go in and try to look for post bomb on the brick because the brick is probably the best post bomb target right now. I sadly miss, but she ends up dying anyway because my Doomfist went on her. And now I can just focus down anybody left and they end up not touching the card at all. And just finish off the Doomfist that's somewhere behind us. Since the Mario ult, instead of taking a fight right now, I'm just gonna set up for a better position in the high ground. I also scout for the Cassidy. I don't really know where he is. I can take the health pack because I took a lot of hope. And just look down and shoot him from above because it's hard for him to contest me up here. Doomfist tries to contest me, so I just go on even higher high ground to make his efforts worthless. And then I just go for the cast now. I have a high ground advantage position on him. So I can just shoot him. And then not dying, which sucks, because I could have recalled it. Because I could have recalled the, uh, the damage I took. I said it just messed it up. Not, I wasn't quick enough to realize that two of them were shooting me. Here there's a nice spot where I can quickly get the high ground. It's just double blinking and getting on top of the uh, nose of this spaceship. Now I can just go be ready to contest the enemy team if they're trying to take the high ground. Doesn't look like any of them has a high ground though, so I can just take it for myself and play above them and shoot them. Shoot the Cassidy until he dies. Still got hindered somehow, but that's that's whatever since I have cover. I shoot down on the Moira because the Moira is in open space. End up finishing the Moira. Try to look for a bolt bomb on the brick. End up sticking her with a nice little technique. Try to dodge the Doomfist punch and finish off the brick that's deep. And now we just uh, kill the Doomfist because he's the only one left allowed. Oh, we can actually kill the Cassidy because the Cassidy went out of spawn very prematurely. Actually, never mind. He has a Mario healing. Since he has Mario with him, I'm not gonna go with the duel. Here's another nice spot where I can just link on, on top of this so I can play high ground. I heard the thunder noise. So I'm just gonna shoot out of Invisible and take the duel with her and end up killing her. I just heard that she did a translocator above, so I was expecting her to be there. That's how I knew she... Uh, that's, a, that's why I tried to shoot and found her out of Invisible. I can think above them here, so I'm now playing above them again. Trying to shoot down any high value targets like the Ana. That's very deep inside of my team. We can finish it off and then focus the Sombra because the Sombra is on the car trying to contest it. And then we can chase the Cassidy now. And I, instead of uh, committing more, like I could have committed my post bomb, but it wasn't worth it. So I'll just disengage and survive. And since my Doomfist went on the cast as well, we can now follow him and continue shooting the, uh, the Moira. Use the little jump box I got there as cover and I can finish the Ana now because the Ana is set up main of the edge because the edge is all alone keep the edge down hold on the cast because I'm about to die and I end up overextending and overestimating my own skills and I die because of it 
But I still did get a quite a lot of value there, so that's great. Here I want to go from an off angle from the right side, even though my cast is dead, I still want to take this fight right now and set up from a better position over here. Try to bait the cast as he's hindered, he does end up hitting headshots, so now I have to watch out a lot. If he ends up pushing me right now, I need to get out as ASAP. So I get out when he starts pushing me because I took so much damage, and I just try to fight the position later on. My Doomfist is also very low and has to disengage fully, so we cannot take any duels right now. Since my Doomfist dies, I just have to survive. Because I cannot really do any too aggressive moves with him being dead. But I can farm a post bomb a bit from this high ground, poking down on anybody, making them trying trying to make them go over here and waste their time pushing me. Or oh, but the cast ends up hitting a nice headshot, so I die. That was a nice shot from him. We the Doomfist here because he's very deep inside of my team, so we try to finish him off or force him out. Because I'm killing my cast, so I gotta watch out for my Mercy, that's trying to rest, try to help her a bit. Dodge the Doomfist punch, and then shoot the Doomfist continuously, trying to finish him off now, he has no ult, it's very killable. We try to shoot him a bit. Even going a bit deep to finish him, but I get headshot by the cast, that was another nice shot from this Cassidy. Which uh, is just a bit unlucky for me. Nice flick. Here I can just go right side and try to help my cast taking space. My Doomfist is dead, so it's not a, a time where I want to engage too much right now. But I can try to help my cast and maybe finish up the Doomfist over here. Recall now because the Doomfist was about to engage him and since I was low, I can just fully disengage because I don't want to die right now and stagger even further. Instead of taking the right side angle since it's been so hard to force it for a few fights now, I'm going to take the left side angle instead and just access the backline a bit easier from this position. I got my Doomfist, he's ulting. Finish off the Ash. Try to hit a Pulse Bomb on her, sadly I miss, and I can just disengage now. Didn't get the value I was looking for, which sucks, but at least I survived. The cast ends up dying because he's alone right side, and now I can try to look for anybody in the backline that's worth going for, but it doesn't look like there's any potential for me to kill anything right now, so I'm just gonna disengage since my Doomfist also died. I should point a bit, I can actually try to contest the action high ground by blinking over here and then walking slowly while being silent and then finish off together with my cast. I can hear the deck cast is coming towards the high ground so I just fight him a bit, utilize the, my movement and then recall when it's time and I can just finish him off now by going aggressive against him. Now I can go for the Mara together with my monkey, that was not the way I intended to blink but it was the way I ended up blinking, which sucks. I get dynamite with the Ash, so I just disengage trying to play for my heals and finish off the Doomfist that's alone in my backline. Now I've got a position in a place where I can possess the Ash. Just so shoot the Ana with my monkey, finish off the Ana, finish off the Ash because she's low. Now I just gotta chill for a second until the Hangman is over. And I can now try to focus the Mara that's on point because she's the only healer and she's very deep. Out of position, we focus on the Mara, end up dying because the Doomfist has a nice punch on me, which is unfortunate, but I could have been more ready for it. Right now it's just about how quickly I can come back to the fight and try to help my team win. I want to look for highest value targets right now. Oh, but I end up not touching. I was just a second too late. That's a big mistake for me, but shit happens. Unfortunate. Crouch spamming makes you more silent in game than not crouch spamming. Holding crouch makes you as silent as you can be. 
Except for you can you can stand still. That's the most silent you can be. But crouch walking is probably the, the most silent form of movement. But crouch bending makes you more silent than just uh, just walking. I heard you were a bounty hunter in the years after Overwatch went down. Who told you that? Did you catch anybody good? The bills are always paid. I'll leave it at that. Five, four. Here, this side, I'm actually going to set up a bit deeper to make sh to, to because I expect them to go to this high ground up here. I want to be able to fight them when they try to. The monkey is already engaging me, so I'm just going to blink backwards here towards. And I'm going to recall because two of them went on me, and I'm just going to blink towards my team. And so it's a bit too aggressive. I went and they were ready to force me out. The monkey is jumping. I'm going to blink backwards to destroy his bubble or focus him because he's very low. A bit of lag. Shit happens. Go for the edge because he's going high ground. We just finish off the edge because she overextended very far. The Ana's low, so we got the Ana next. I'm gonna go towards the Moira on point because the Moira is trying to push the point as far as she can. I end up recalling because I was very low and we just focus the Genji instead. And now we go for the Moira next because she's the only one left alive. You see how I'm slowly deciding what abilities to use when or when to blink where. And there's reasons behind it. That's the most important part about Tracer. Since I can hear the Doomfist engaging, I want to deal with him, try to blink behind him maybe, so I can do more damage to him from, from the back. And since the Ash is set up high ground, I'm gonna try to deal with her because I also see that my cast is shooting her, so we end up shooting her together. And now I can just disengage her, trying to waste the Doomfist time blinking because he was about to use his uh, punch. Trying to finish him off. I said we missed time my post bomb so he doesn't die to it. And now I need to recall because I need to get back high ground because this is the best pathing to escape. I messed up my post bomb a bit there. That's unfortunate. I'm waiting for the Doomfist to punch in so I can shoot him now. I shoot him from the back and just dodge his punch again. It's all about dodging his cooldowns. Shoot the edge from the high ground. Watch out for the Genji because the Genji could engage on me right now. Dash dynamites me so I just blink towards my support and get a bit healed up. And if anybody goes to contest the card at some point, I'm the one that's probably most suited to go and contest them, so that I will do. We end up f finishing the Moira off because she used her fade in a pretty obvious position. And I just do some nice movement and tracking to finish her off. Since they're all contesting card now, I'm gonna go down and contest it so they don't push it. Now we shoot the cast, but the cast is very low. My is shooting the cast. We try to turn our attention to the Ana because the Ana was very low, but she ends up dying because my cast was a good time. Recall out. I wanted to get a bit aggressive trying to see if I can finish off the Moira. Sadly, I couldn't. Hi. Here, I want to set up a post bomb somewhere in the fire. I can see that they now have uh, Reinhardt. Very important about Tracer post bomb. You always gotta figure out if they have any ability or any way to counter it. For example, Cash could roll and he will get 50% damage reduction, so I cannot post bomb him. That wouldn't be suited unless I see him roll. So I should probably go for anybody else, or the Moira has fade, so I don't wanna I don't wanna use it on her. I'll probably wanna use it on the Cass if or if he has rolled, or the Ana, or the uh, the Ash. But since they're contest since they're bridging card pretty far, I'm gonna go contested so they don't cap capture the objectives and the cast is very low. I'm just gonna finish him off because he has no healing with him. I can also pull on the Ryan here since uh since the Ryan was low, but he ends up getting nano so completely for the waste, I also miss it. But I can just stay inside of my Light Reaver's tree and focus on any targets that overextended, like the Ana. Now we can go for the Ash because she has no healing and no help in lane here. And then I can just go back to the objective, trying to help my team fight this Reinhardt. Now it's just the Tracer left alive, so we focus her. Set up again to go card if anybody goes there early, but it's pretty far for them to, to get to the card, so I can play a bit closer to them and fight them earlier. Trying to build my post bomb for this last fight. And here the trailer's top, so we try to focus her down, and she ends up dying because she wasn't expecting me to shoot her. And I'm gonna just put this card now that the Reinhardt is over here, and I'm building my pulse so I can finish him off with it, like this. And then I can just focus down any other targets like the Ana that's trying to contest the card, so we can win the game. Let's see where we get placed. Play of the game. It's hard. 
So it's we could place platinum three. That's pretty okay. Not too bad. Let's go. I get good boots on. Okay, so I'm gonna roll out rats out here. We have Saria, Solia, Lucio, and Mara. So we have a very rush or dive heavy composition. Or not really dive, but rush heavy. I'm gonna instantly fight the Tracer. She got the Mega, so I'm gonna be a bit more cautious because I'm lower HP than her. I'm gonna be ready to go to the mini that's located closest to me. And she ends up using her recall, so I can, now I can just pressure her a lot because I haven't, didn't use my recall. It's all about trying to save, preserve your recall and these duels. I have to chase her down and finish her all. In the Mara's half HP, and I just heard her use Fade, so I'm gonna try to look for her. Finishing this Mario off. And then I'm just gonna see if I can get any value or at least pull my pulse on a bit while dodging as much as I can right now because there's no reason to die. After I killed the tracer, the tank died, so we just instantly win the fight. I'm gonna set up a right side angle here to make sure the tracer doesn't test anything over here. And so I can go in the widow as well since I know they have a widow. I can hit the widow, so I'm just gonna go over her, I'm gonna solo shot a bit. I'm just gonna wait a bit and look for any opportunities to do anything. We've been up finishing off the tracer to get them a soldier. I can blink in and shoot the sun. Try to dodge my dodge his bullets as well as possible, and then just use a recall when I get low, and then now disengage because of the widowmaker respawning. And now I'm just gonna hold from an off angle over here at the right side. I can set up a flank as well since I have four bomb. I see this water brick. The tracer shooting me, so I'm just gonna disengage slowly, using all my blinks, even blinking up here, taking the mega. Then I can come backwards and try to help my soldier duel this tracer. And yeah, the Widowmaker is close as well. I see the bricks. So now I know I have a good post target right here. So I'm just gonna do 180 behind the brick shield and both former. Then I'm gonna go for the Widowmaker. One kill because she is very stationary. And all while dodging the tracer as much as possible. Now I can just disengage, try to go for the mini that's closest to me. And just continue fighting the tracer. And I end up killing her. She had no recall after burning it in my in duel against me. I don't want to take the fight with Mara right now because I have so low resources. If the Mara ends up shooting me, I might have to recall. But the Mara just ended up running, so I finish her off and we get beat so we can finish her wrist as well. And since the brick and Hanzo came back from spawn, we just chase him down and kill him. I want to preserve like my my cooldowns as well as I can while not doing too many risky duels, as you can see. But at the same time, I'm realistic about what damage I can do and how much I can dodge. Here yeah, I'm set up at the right side again. I might actually just stack with my team right now because I'm full form and I just want to get it off on the brick or anybody. The brick and Hansel are the two best targets I can do because it's a certain kill if I hit my pulse bomb. If I sold it that to the Pokemon I want to do for trade, like right now, the Mara is low, so I'm poking the Mara. I can see the Brick is very far push up. I'm gonna dodge the Hanzo, dodge the Hanzo again because he's looking at me, but he was very deep, so he ends up dying. Now I can just chase down the Brick because she's low, try to pull from her, we're not hitting it, it's great. Then we just focus the reset, the Tracer shooting me from the side and have no recalls. I'm just gonna back off a bit and play it safer. And then I'm not touching the point. Look at the state of the world. Something has to change. Five, four, three, two, 
So here on this map, we just walk to Diva. So it's still kind of the same. I have a backline that can't heal me a lot, but I don't play around health packs more. But I also have a backline that can engage a lot of the enemies. The left side here, we just fight the Tracer. The Tracer took a 2v1 against me and my Diva, so she ends up dying. Didn't use a recall or anything. I'm just gonna continue over at the left side here, playing together with my Diva, so I'm safe, but also in a very aggressive position. I can hear the Cash shooting me, so I'm just gonna blink towards the Cash, shoot him a bit, and then go behind him. And shoot him from a different angle. I can even use my recall for it because I took a lot of damage. I see the treasures in front of me, so I'm just gonna back off to get heals. Because I just use my recalls. I want to play it safer. I, uh, I just back off even further because my Mora is dead and they're chasing us. So I just think away towards any help I can get from maybe my soldier. And then I end up living. A diva also died in the process, so now we just have to wait for the diva and the uh, Mora to come back from spawn. Tanks was too much, so now I have to play slower and go into the back line. I hear the tracer is recall red side, so I'm just gonna blink towards her and check the duel with her like right now because she has no recall. She ends up fully disengaging and two of them are shooting me, so I'm just gonna back out and take the mini. There's no need for me to take a duel, that's too hard, so I'm just gonna wait for a second for the ultra regen to kick in. And once I'm full HP, I can just go again and take an off angle, pressure them a bit. Two of them are pushing me again, so I'm taking a lot of their attention. My team should have an easier time in the main battle then. Shoot the cats a bit, try to dodge his bullets. Then go over to the health, mini health pack and continue dueling the cats. Use my recoil and very low and then I'm just gonna disengage so I'm certain I don't die. While waiting for my team to respawn. And the treasure ends up getting caught out so I can just blink over here trying to dodge the cats. Now I'm playing above them so I have a better opportunity to hit a pulse bomb. Trying to scout the cats because he seems to be going very aggressive and now he's disengaging so we have uh, uh, focusing down together with my Sigma or with my Ramatra. And now we just chase the Moira because she has no cooldowns left and very low. And then he just come back to point try to help my team capture it over here. Shoot the monkey and he's disengaged and try to shoot the tracer here a bit. I want to use my pink so I dodge her. I don't want to die. And since the monkey is very low we can now push up and the brick is also very low so we just focus her. Try to post bomber. We end up missing it sadly so... Now it's just about playing a bit safer since I also use my recall in that process. If my team keeps staying here, we're very, very killable. So, quick to get out. The brigands are extending a bit and they engage. I mean, the cast is behind, so I'm just gonna scout out where he's high noning from and then I'm gonna completely LOS it. I think the Mara is half over here, sitting away. So I try to finish off the Mara because she has no fate. Then I can just disengage, take the health pack, I'll put HP and then focus the tracer down. Together with more Matra. Now that it's both to Reinhardt and Reaver, so they're gonna. I'm gonna just play above them here because it's gonna be hard for them to contest me. I just play above them since the Reinhardt cannot go high ground, the Moira and Rick cannot either. You can play above them and utilize cover while poking down on the back line. Not really being too worried, you just keep shooting the Moira, she would have to walk eventually. And that I know, so. Because she wanted to help a Reinhardt, so eventually she has gonna have to pick me. Let me just focus on the break. Yeah. Now we can look for staggers since it's almost less fight. But the Reaver, for example, is a great stagger. Got the post bomb him, sadly miss it. And now I just get out because uh, I don't want to die. Oh, that's a bit too aggressive for me, so I end up getting post bomb by the enemy tracer and I die. Yeah, it was nice to uh, play from the enemy tracer because she realized I had no recall. So, yeah, nice pull from there. Right now, the fight is quite losable, so you're probably just going to reset and play the next fight. I'm gonna look for some chip damage or some pull damage here. I can hit the tracer coming left side, so I'm expecting her to maybe duel me. She's right here. I'll just take the duel with her. And I end up killing her because she was a bit unaware about my engagement. Now I can just go behind them because now that I killed the tracer, I'm completely free to do whatever I want. I can just go behind them and keep poking them while playing a bit safe around corners so I don't take too much damage. I can even drop point, play over here behind them, and just do whatever I want because there's no one that can really push me. Now we just focus the Reinhardt after he killed the Moira. Focus the Tracer, focus the Reaver. And it should be really hard for them to touch. I don't actually think any of them can touch, so that should be game. Play 
of the game. Okay, let's go. Prepare for battle. Select your hero. I could have rebuilt you without all that mess. Oh look, cancel what? It's not about... Okay guys, the technique for Tracer is not about canceling the boss bomb. It's about pressing Q before you blink. If you press Q and then blink like... Half a second after... Or a bit less than that, then you can spawn the post bomb inside of them. It's a technique that's very good. When you do it like that, it's almost like meleeing. Like it's the same range of almost as like a melee if you blink melee. So hit the red side. I'm just gonna go and pressure them from an off angle again. Try to scout out what they have. They have double hit scan plus a Kiriko, a Mercy, and a Diva. I have a Doomfist and a Genji, so I should be able to look for some engagement with my Genji and Doomfist at some point. Diva is overextending a lot, so we're just gonna focus her. We see my team is all looking at her, so we're just gonna help my team looking at the Diva for a bit since she's very low. I do myself dying together with my Mara. But now I can try to help my Genji because he's fighting somebody up here. We see the soldiers low, we see the castles low, and just focus them while we try to dodge the Diva a bit. And we end up killing her as well. That's great. Then I can just join my Kiriko, get a bit of healing, and go up and poke and build my post bomb since I'm very close to it. I need to have an Ikra now, I'm just gonna poke her a bit, trying to get my pulse bomb. I don't want to be too aggressive now, because we're dying right now would be kind of bad, so I'm just gonna disengage. When I see that they start taking space, we take the mini over here at the left side. We need the Kiriko behind, so I'm just gonna shoot her a bit, try to finish her off. Then she use Susu and she beat out, it's worth it. Like, burning recoil like that is usually not great, but trading it for a Susu is a good co uh, cooldown trade, because Susu is a really good cooldown. I'm just focus on the D.Va because she's overextending, trying to kill Mamara and kill the baby D.Va as well. Then I can go to Card, so make sure we're pushing it, shoot the Echo there, and we're not killing her as well. Now since we want second find, fight, it should be very easy for us to get the capture of the objective right here, where we can get good spawns then. So here I want to set up a pulse bomb early on. I'm gonna scout over here, there's a tracer, and I'll just take a duel with her very slowly. I always want to blink when she's just about to shoot me, because then she has to adjust her, her crosshair and shoot me, like just this. And like now she's about to shoot me, so I blink to the side, and she does way less damage to me. Now I'm gonna try to go for the mini over here, and wait a bit to see if the tracer retakes the duel. She doesn't, so I just go for the Moira instead, because the Moira is now deep in my backline. But no fate, but it looks like my team is already dead, so I'm just not gonna take a fight at all. I'm gonna blink all the way out. Playing for the high ground because the tracer will have to walk a long path to follow me. I can take the mini health pack. Now I can just fight the tracer a bit while playing still for health packs. Taking over here and I can just take the mega for free. And now I'm ahead of the tracer duel and she will have to use a bad recall and I just kill her because I paid for the health packs. And now I can just go set up for a pulse bomb. Maybe I won't even need the pulse bomb since we're already up one person. The fight is only a 4v5 right now, but they have committed ults. I'm gonna assert the situation for a second. Oh, I, won't, I was gonna link to the mini, uh, to the little room to get the mini health back, but I ended up getting taking too much damage. I was a bit too slow, so I just died. But my team still ends up winning the fight with ults, which is great. That's tracers like paper sometimes. Like you see how I was just like one second too slow, so I just end up getting burned and die er, er, instantly. So now is a good time to go look for a post bomb. 
might even go just hide here for a second and wait for the team to walk out. The enemy team to walk out so I can look for a clean pulse bomb on anybody. I end up hitting the diva and the, the, the splash damage to the echo and she dies. So that's great. Now it's just about poking a bit and trying to wait for my Doomfist to go in and then follow him. Shoot anybody that's low. Now my Doomfist is going in so I can try to help him a bit. He's fighting the Tracer. We shoot the Mara because she's walking up. Now I'm gonna watch out for my team. Because the enemy team should push him in. I can recall because I'm very low and then I can just disengage because I don't want to take a duel right now. Since two of my teammates have died, it's probably a lost fight. I can just wait over here, shoot the Mara a bit because she's still the only one. Oh, she's she's pushing card together with someone else, but I just shoot the Mara. End up almost killing her, betting the fade, and I can just take the mini health back and then I can rotate further away. And now I'm just fighting the Diva because he came out of spawn. It's not really a dangerous duel for me to take, I just don't have to force it. I don't have to force the duel with the Diva because I won't win it, but I shouldn't die either. We shoot the echo here a bit, I utilize the tunnel here high ground and I can see the, the life reaver is very deep in and he has no cooldowns left now so we just focus the life reaver a bit and he ends up using his ult for it but we can maybe still kill him and now we just focus anybody like a diva because the fight should be won at this point I can even go do the smarter choice and go for card right now because more important than winning the fight or like finishing off the diva is just pushing the card back so we can get the good spawn again since the enemies push it more than halfway of the map, we don't have good spawns right now, but when we get it past the checkpoint, we get back the good spawns. So. Tracer is along right side, and the, my cast has hit a few shots on her, so I'm just gonna go follow up and see if I can finish her off or take a duel with her. Uh, sadly, she got bubbled, so I'm just gonna recall it and disengage because she also had healing from Moira. It's just not worth it to take a duel with no recall. I'm just gonna stack with my team a bit and I can contest the Tracer because she's trying to take an off angle on my team. I'll just fight her for a second. Try to help my Mara now, killing the Tracer because she has no recall, she should die, that's great. Now I can look for following up my Pulse Bomb with probably my Grab because that's just uh, There might be a few guaranteed kills and in a fight where we're just about to cap, it's great. But just look, it's probably not worth it to grab the Saria, so I'm just not gonna grab the Saria. I'm gonna look for the Sen instead, wherever he went. I completely lost him for a second there, to focus on the Saria. And I go for both bomb here, we try to hit the soldier, he dies anyway, so it wasn't really needed. Then we shoot the echo and try to go for the echo. And now that's just clean up, so we end up capping. your defenses select your hero well, let's go we get hollywood Cheers, yeah the rules are friend So we have Orisa, Pharaoh, Anna, and Moira. Bit of a weird comp, but I'm just gonna play around a lot of my Orisa's brawl and utilize my Pharaoh's poke damage onto any squishy target so she doesn't get 2v1 or she doesn't get in a bad 1v1. For example, like when you have a Pharaoh and you're playing Tracer, if they have a hitscan, you should maybe always take the fights with the hitscan because the hitscan cannot do a lot against my Pharaoh if the hitscan always has a Tracer looking at them. 
We have a Reinhardt and Lucio. We just shoot the Lucio because he's engaging very hard. I'm just playing from an right side angle here because I have options. So by playing here, if they push me or if they shoot me a lot, I just have to disengage down there or disengage to high ground. So I have options from this position. I don't even have to overextend the lot because I have an Ash and a Widowmaker. And I don't want to get headshot. So I just need to play around the corner here and wait for them to walk out. There's nothing else uh, I should be doing right now. I can poke the Ryan a lot when he's taking space. Poke the Lucio again because the Lucio is going very deep and the Lucio dies again. And my Pharaoh now died, so it's just the uh, equal fight right now. I just shoot them a bit. The Widowmaker dies, so I can take a bit more space now. I can see the Ash is low, so we try to finish off the Ash. I see the Rhinos up here, so I just bully him a bit. And walk around here, shooting him, bullying my post bomb. The Lucio's back up here, so we shoot the Lucio. I end up finishing off the Lucio because he did some predictable movement while wall riding. I'll just disengage again because the Widowmaker respawned and I don't want to get headshot by her. We shoot the Ryan because she's uh, overextending a bit. Now I can look for a post bomb at some point. I don't have to force it right now, but there's no reason to, so I'm just gonna set up a bit closer at this time because of the post bomb. So now, since they've taken a bit of space, I'm looking for an engagement with the post bomb. I try to shoot the Kiriko, maybe forcing a Susu so I can post bomb after she has your Susu. I think that because I took a bit of poke damage. Wait, they also have a Baptiste, so I, I shouldn't really be worrying about Susu and the Immortality Field. Too much because just forcing both of them would be great. I saw that they used the mortality field. I recall the damage I took, and I can just wait for the health pack again. Now I can just look for a post bomb in some ways. Sadly, I take too much poke, so I'm just gonna go out and not go for the post bomb at all because the Reinhardt overextended a lot all alone. Just keeping the heals away from the Reinhardt is good enough. I don't have to force a post bomb if there's no opportunity that's good for it. I'm still just playing out of this room up here. I can even try to go for a post bomb on the Beb and Spawn. I actually think I will try to do that. So, even though the monkey is engaging right now, he's engaging with a teammate dead. So, I can just go for the Beb here. They blink and then post bomb him when he has Mortality Field. They just shoot and then he dies. Because he's going to be 1 HP after your Mortality Fields. I just shoot him instantly. And here, the Ash is going somewhere. So, I'm expecting her to maybe be up here. Doesn't look like she is. The Kiriko is pushing me, so I just take her duel with her. Since it's a 2v1 now, I'm just going to recall and disengage because I don't have to take the 2v1. I could try to um, push my mechanics and take the 2v1, but then I would have to dodge a lot and track a lot better than if I just took a 1v1, so I don't have, I don't, there's no reason for me to take the 2v1. I already killed the bat, so I already got the value. We shoot the monkey here because he's engaging very deep. We just try to chip him down. Looks like he has a lot of healing with him, and my team is dying, so I'm just going to disengage. No reason for me to stay right now, because I, I, there's nothing I can kill right now. I can try to look for a touch on the point that's... So I'm just gonna blink up here to be maybe be able to touch. I'm just touching once now, then I'm gonna recall out and disengage fully. That doesn't look like it's worth touching because my team isn't uh, quickly enough, uh, quick enough to get back to point in time to touch after I'm dead, so it's not worth dying for. I'm just gonna set up with the left side over here, camping the high ground because they might be able to take it, or fighting the tracer because she is trying to kill my Symmetra, so we just help my Symmetra a bit. The monkey is engaging at me, so I'm just gonna blink towards the Mega and I take it once it's back. Mana ends up healing me, so I don't have to wait for it. I can just send to take a lot of damage, I end up waiting for it, and then I should shoot the tracer around the corner because she was unaware about, uh, about her not getting healed. Now I'm just gonna go contest the card because mid fight on tracer is really great to contest card here. So they don't get any progress to push, I just think around the extra bit, do some technique and just kill her there. Since I'm low, I'm just gonna back off and try to get for a health pack and try maybe help my Ana with dueling the monkey that's in our backline. You can see the Tracer taking a fight with me here, so I'm just gonna blink away from her because I don't want to force a fight when I don't have my recall. And since I now have my recall back, I can take a fight. I was, uh, I had less resources than the Tracer, so, so there was no reason for me to take the fight. Take the high ground, maybe baiting somebody up to take fight on the high ground, like the bat. Got a poke on the bat, but I had to miss it, so I don't get any value with it. Then I just dropped because the monkey tried to take a fight up on the high ground, and he wanted the space, so I just give it to him. There's no reason for me to fight the monkey. But I can regain the high ground after the monkey dropped down. Now I can look for an engage on the back line. I see the edge already knows I'm here, so I'm gonna look for a different target instead. And maybe even blink over here to this high ground, where I can fight the edge so she doesn't get the space. I just fight the Ash as hard as I can, and maybe she will die because she's very low, and then I just go for the Bev after because he's half. Fight the Bev and kill him, then I just disengage, go for the mini health back, and then I drop down and try to help my Rissa. Trying to figure out what the Kiriko is. 
on trying to figure out if a monkey can die. It looks like monkey is very killable right now, even though he's ulting. Just shoot him and shoot him and shoot him. He doesn't really have a lot of follow up on his ult right now, so he's. Not really, we just keep shooting him and we can build a lot of pulse bombs. And the Kiriko is low and she TV teleported out. I'm just gonna go focus the Kiriko. Gonna blink behind the ash, pulse bomb her. Then I'm gonna look for kill on the bap. Since I have very low resources, I'm just gonna chill for a second and wait. My Mario is uh, ulting, so it should be a free kill on the bap. And then the monkey now can come back to card and help my Orisa fight the tracer. Looks like the Tracer is headed for the health pack, so I just cut off her path. It's about trying to predict where they, what they want to do and then just stopping them from being able to do it. She wanted to get the health pack, so I just set up and stop her. Monkey's jumping high ground, so we poke him a bit, building a pulse bomb and forcing him to get... Like, forcing his, his support's attention. Kiriko is very deep right now, with, uh, when a monkey drops, so we shoot the Kiriko, we shoot the intelligence field, get it, and then just place engage fully. Because now I got a lot of value by getting the immortality field. Plus I don't have any recall left, so there's no reason for me to stay deep in there. Since I almost have my recall left, I'm gonna engage again, trying to dodge the ash, and I can shoot the back here that's over at the side. Hold bomb him because she was right in front of me. And then I can regain high ground trying to fight the ash up here since I knew she was low. I end up killing her as well. I need to focus the traitor that's on card. I recall about here. And we win the fight. How do you avoid getting shot? It's about trying to figure out what the enemy is like, what patterns they're trying to read in my movement. So AD, AD is not always just enough because that is readable at some point. You gotta you gotta make it really annoying for the enemies to try to hit you by doing doing what you think they won't expect you to do. If you see somebody walking in a straight line, you always want to be like, oh, they're walking in a straight line, let me just shoot them and predict the straight line. But what if what if they then stop walking in a straight line? Your brain is going to be like all fussy and be like, what the fuck? The now I can't hit them because they're not walking in a straight line anymore. It's, it's the timing, position and knowledge. Like imagine this Rebo trying to shoot me right here. If he shoots me, I'm gonna be like, walk to the walk, walk to the left side. Then when he's he's trying to predict my straight line, I'm just gonna walk to the right side instead, and then do it in different lengths and the intervals, so it becomes very readable for him. Very unreadable for him, I mean. So he won't be able to hit me. But you can't always dodge everything, and sometimes you just will get headshot, and that's just how it is. But if you die a lot and get hit a lot, then you should try to figure out some movement to counter prevent that. The only double edged sword about movement is the, the harder, the better movement you do for the enemies not to hit you, the harder it will be for you to aim as well. So you need to have good communication between your right and left hand when you do movement. Because if you, if I move to like weird and try to just make it super unpredictable, I need my hand to be able to counter uh, act those uh, engagements with, with, uh, with my aim. They have Doom, they have Lucio, they have Soldier. And they're playing really aggressive, trying to hold space deep here. I'm trying to wait for one of them to make a mistake, like a Lucio right here. Oh, we didn't punish his mistake enough and I end up wasting my recall. But I'm still building some pulse bomb right now, so it's not too bad. I can just take a bit of an angle over here, pressuring them a bit. And once I see my shot and my team is taking space, I can go behind them and blink over here, take the mini. Now I have an off angle going or even a flank. Cody is chasing me with the QB I'm just gonna bait the attention. I don't want to take a fight because there are two people now. I'll just disengage fully, take the health pack, and then I can go back once they put their attention elsewhere. Shoot the soldier and Ash down here because they're isolated in the room and my Risa is on them as well. And then we just go back to help my backline and swap between going on their backline and, and helping my backline. That's something that's really nice about Tracer since she's such a mobile character. She has a lot of options on who she can go for, so it's always about figuring out who is more important to help right now. Oh, what's more, what's more important to do? Is it more important to do damage to the enemy backline, or is it more important to make sure my backline isn't dying? You should always try to set up and make sure that their enemy backline is getting pressured a lot. It's, it's not like you should always help your own team, but sometimes it's way better to turn your attention back to your own team and help them instead of doing anything on the enemy backline. I try to dodge the Kiriko, but I end up dying, which sucks. I'm just gonna 
since two of, two of uh, us have died now, I'm just gonna hope my team doesn't die and I'm gonna set up a post bomb soon since I just got it. I can hear that they're holding close, I can see they're holding close, so I'm just gonna blink left side, left side, we post on the ash and then disengage so we don't die by my own post bomb. And then I'm gonna look for the soldier maybe because it sounds like he's looking for me. So I just shoot him a bit. Since two of them put their attention on me, I wanted to disengage, but I probably should have recalled instead. It was a bit too risky to take the dual 2v1. So I, I forced the dual, dual 2 hard right there and that's why I died. Now that we're Kinsune, it's just about playing inside the Kinsune and utilizing my fast recall and my high blink uh, output and doing as much damage to the Doom or anybody in the front line as possible. And since I took a lot of damage, I'm just gonna go over here and I can set up on the high ground instead to get vision onto the back line and also avert the attention onto me. Do some tracking onto the Lucio. Just go over here and I can recall back to high ground. Oh, sadly, the recall didn't reach how far enough, so I need to go back to high ground. So I'm just gonna disengage, take the health pack. And then manually go back high ground because it is the better position to be above them right now. They have a way harder time contesting me when I'm above them. I can even look for the Lucio that's in the phone, so I'll shoot him a bit, shoot the Ash a bit. The Doomfist is going high ground, so I'm just gonna blink away and not take a fight with the Doomfist. Since I got healed up by my supports, I can now go back to high ground and contest the angle again. Also because I hear that the Ash is up there, the Ash drops behind in my backline, so we focus the Ash. She ends up going back to the high ground, so I'm gonna go out to the high ground again and contest her. Oh, I end up missing my post bomb pretty badly on the edge, but that sucks. And now I just focus the Doomfist instead because he's very deep in my backline. He's using ult, so we just try to focus the Doomfist now because right now the best thing to do is to help my backline not dying. And since the Doomfist is warm, we keep on shooting him and up dying. Now I can help my Risa push and since the Doomfist is uh, dead. Oh, I end up getting Helix right in the face by the soldier. Well played from him. It sucks. I should have been more ready for it and and, and uh, dodge the helix, but it should happen sometimes. Next round, I just want to build my pulse bomb as fast as possible so I can get the value on trying to hit it on one of the squishies. Since it's only one fight we need to win, I just need to play fully to kill. I can set up right side now with my brick and try to contest the high ground. See the Doomfist is punching in. Now I'm gonna chase the Doomfist a bit because he used the cooldown and going very deep. So he's very killable. And we see the Kiriko is very deep as well. So we focus the Kiriko down. I hit the Soldier's right side. He used a lot of cooldowns. So I'm waiting for healing. And then I can just push the Soldier. Even though he got beat, I'm still gonna focus the Soldier because I know he's low after the beat. Also, he has ult. So we just shoot the Soldier down with my Rissa. Now we focus the Lucio because he's on, on uh, the objective. Now we shoot the Doomfist and we're waiting for the Kiriko. So maybe teleport back from spawn. Try to put on her, so if we miss it, blink behind her and try to kill her. And we kept the point. to New Junk City. Prepare for battle. Select your hero. Okay, so we get New Junk City again. This is a great choice map. Like, sure, I sort of said at the start of the Unranged Grand Master that I wouldn't talk a lot about maps, but this map is especially good for Tracer. Almost all flash uh, point maps are. Push your limits. Nothing breaks that I cannot mend. I'm gonna go right side and go straight 
into looking for what the enemy has. So, Trace is also a great character to scout because he's usually there before everybody else. I don't have Soldier now. They have Echo. They have Arissa. I took a lot of poke damage. I'm gonna blink towards my support and play for healing. Trying to dodge the Echo. They have Arissa, Echo, Soldier, Lucio, and Moira. So, I'm gonna try to fight somebody over the left side. My Queen is walking very aggressive early here, taking some space. So, I fight the Soldier that's low. Use my recall and then shoot, shoot on the Lucio that's 1 HP and now I can capture point. My queen kind of decided to fight by just walking in very early and, and taking a lot of uh, attention from the enemy team. Which, which was great. Now I'm gonna set up early actually here. And I can hear the have a tracer. And they're all actually going over there so I'm actually not gonna take any fight here. I can poke the tracer a bit but I wanna disengage when I get the chance because I don't wanna take a fight if they're all over there. There's a tracer at some point and my Mario is going to fight the tracer. I'm gonna join her. I can see that the Mario used fade very aggressively, so I'm gonna try to po focus on the Mario a bit. She ends up dying. I can hear the Soldier's high ground, so I shoot the Soldier. And then I just help my team to focus down anybody else, like the Lucio. While getting healing and dodging the tracer, I recall because I'm low and they end up dying. Now I'm gonna set up a bit closer. This is a very strong thing on Flashpoint maps, is that the point caps way faster, so taking fights closer means it's harder for them to touch the point because they have to deal with the people in the way. So I can see that they're going down here, I'm gonna go fight them soon, just to make it harder for them to touch the point, but it looks like the Tracer already is touching the point, so I'm gonna go high ground and play above them instead because it's the smarter choice. Use it as the high ground, and shoot down on the point. We poke the Ryan because he's touching, then we just pretty drop any other targets that's remaining, like the Baptist and the Mercy. Now I'm setting up the next point. I want to get a pulse bomb off early if I can to maybe get a pig. I'm gonna set up around here so I can both scout the left side angle and the right side angle and take any fights I need. Since it looks like they're all coming to the right side and my queen is already fighting them, I'm gonna try to join her a bit and do some damage. I can even set up for a, a flank from right side here. Pressure them, bait the tracer in for a duel. Take the duel with the tracer. Since she has an orb, I'm just gonna leave the duel. There's no reason for me to stay in there. And my Reinhardt, or their Reinhardt dies, and my queen is ulting, so I wanted to walk up and follow up on my queen's ult, shooting any of the native targets that won't receive healing. And then I just listen and hear that the tracer is over here, and she ends up dying, and we capture the point, so that's great. Even though the enemies are doing a lot of mistakes, you see how I'm still trying my best not to do any mistakes myself or die early or put myself in any disadvantageous position. I always look for cues. Like the cue, for example, is right now that my Mara is ulting, so we have an advantage in the fight. I don't want to take too much from poke here, so I'm just going to recall and get out because I don't want to 2v1 inside of a small room. There's no reason for me to be in there because my team is not in there. I'll just play very slow here. And I look at the tracer or anybody that might take an off angle. The Reinhardt is pinning in, so I'm gonna blink away. And here, my queen is fighting the Zingata, so I wanna help my queen. The queen has him killing the Zingata, so I'm going towards the health pack while fighting the Reaver. Do a melee on him and then recall my whole HP back. And then I can chase the Reaver down because he has no fate left now, so he's very vulnerable and he has low HP. We we'll just go for a bolt on the Reinhardt. Sadly, I miss it, but the Mara fades, so we we'll just focus the Mara and the Reinhardt down together and they die. I tried to put my pulse bomb behind the Ryan shield, but I sadly mistimed it, so it, it, it ended up in front of his shield, but that's okay in the end, because it wasn't too risky of a play, because most of the other people were dead. I'm expecting it to be somewhere over left side, it was actually behind us, so I'm just gonna go slowly towards the objective, and if my team doesn't decide to go towards the objective, then I will just stay with my team for a while, actually. Oh no, I didn't hear this in Yasa left side, I'm just maybe a bit uh, slow in the head right now, so I end up dying. That's okay in the end. The ideal thing we could have done there as a team was just all go towards objective together. Since my team stayed a bit behind, I tried to stay with them, but yeah, this Nyata hit a few nice shots and I died. It still looks like the enemy is pretty far away, so I'm gonna attempt to capture the point before they get here. Uh, it looks like the Reinhardt will be able to touch uh, together with the Sombra. So I'm just gonna annoy them a bit by touching the objective because they will have a hard time dealing with me. I recall because I'm low and then I'm just gonna blink out and disengage while waiting for my team to reset. Then poke a bit trying to build my post bomb. Got the Decassity's far left so I'm just no, far apart on the high ground above point so I'm just gonna rotate all the way far left behind them and wait for my team to do a move so I can 
I can engage without having to worry too much about all of the enemies. I can hear the Zenyatta is somewhere left side underneath, so I'm gonna bring towards the Zenyatta and shoot him a bit while utilizing the wall and corners to my advantage. And then I'm gonna re reposition myself over, get ready to shoot the high ground where the cast is. And we just shoot him down and then stop dying. Then we just focus the Mario next, because she's the only one left alive. And she ends up dying. Yeah, I'm gonna set up a post bomb somewhere over this side because I know the enemies are gonna probably play somewhere around here, so I can look for a post bomb early on. I'm probably the Zenyatta or the uh, Cassidy or the Moira if she uses Fade. Oh, the Sombra ends up hacking me from behind, so I'm just gonna try to dodge her a bit while I'm lucky that my Moira was with me to help me. And we can focus on the Sombra now because she has low cooldowns and she's low HP. So we focus on the Sombra and she ends up dying. I'll be called to save the HP and then we shoot the Moira because she's hindered. Since she had used fade, I'm just gonna blink towards her, just for a full form, stick her, no fade from the Mara, so she cannot do anything, and then I look at the sick man, now the Sinyasa, because the Sinyasa is the only one left alive. I can hit the Zombra somewhere because she just said boob, so I'm gonna fight her, play the duel with her, and then push up and finish her off because she overextended a lot all on her own. And then I'm gonna continue left side, taking an angle further behind them, shooting the Mara because she's low. I'm trying to finish off the Mario wherever she is. So I tried to dodge the Cassidy shot, but I ended up dying right before the game ended. It wasn't too risky pushing far into the spawn there because they had a very hard time touching since the Sombra died. But well, it's all right in the end. Play of the game. A major crisis. You're scattered, mate. I was born to rule. Prepare for battle. Select your hero. Let's go. Did all the score? Cheers, love. I it's did. time to save the world. A friend of mine has a massive collection of vintage vinyl. That's sick. If they want, I could send them some stuff too. Iggy would love that. We we'll get another King of the Hill map a map we haven't played yet. This is also a very great tracer map. Oh. So we have Saria, Hanzo, Lucio, and Moira. Again, a comp that can rush a lot and take a lot of space. So I'm just going to play very aggressive together with my Saria. I'm going to roll out the left side, scout what the enemies have. I'm going to take as much space as I can so I just can hear. They have a Hawk, Ana, Ash, Cassidy. And just poke the Cassidy a bit and have some Yata. Even though I get hindered here, it's fine. I have I got bubble. I can poke the Goldhawk because he's taking a lot of space. I, I took all of the space over here and now I own it. So now the, all of the enemies seem has to play right side. Roadhog is in the hoop, we just push out the hop because he's very low. We can hit the cast attack and angle over here, so we poke down the cast, we go for the health pack, disengage now that he got a lot of support, and we can go back to shooting the hop. I'm actually gonna force card here because there's no reason not to. They will have a hard time walking on support because my team is gonna poke them while that's happening. So the Roadhog is very killable now that he's walking on support. And now we're just shooting the Roadhog, shooting the Roadhog. I can even go for the Ash over here because I heard that my Hansel was fighting her. And since the Rodak is full HP, instead of going for him and forcing card, I'm just gonna continue over the right side and look for a post bomb since I already have built it. I can shoot this in that side a bit, go for a post bomb, and then blink away from it, and go for a hit on this Ana. And now I can force card, trying to dodge the hook and not getting hit by the Roadhog at all. Roadhog is a great post bomb builder for Tracer, as long as you dodge his hook. This water is very low in the corner here, I'm just gonna poke him a lot and I can look for a bit of chase. I don't want to overextend chasing them right here, but the cast was low, so we focus him, we blink the weapon soldier, take a bit of a duel with him, blink towards the health pack, take the health pack, and then we can chase the soldier for a bit longer. 
when he's not dying. Now we go for the Ana because the Ana is pretty deep compared to how deep my team is. The Lucio ends up, my Lucio ends up dying though because he overextended a bit. So we're just gonna back off now. I can build a bit of pull on the Roadhog and blink away. So I have a postman ready for next fight. Get the Roadhog, Roadhog, and I can just look for a postman whenever. But I want to make sure that they probably don't have Susu first. So I'm gonna try to poke the Kiriko when she's walking out for a higher chance of her using Susu. I gotta make sure I dodge the Roadhog. Blink away when he's about to hook and just use corners. Dodging him. Okay, he hooked me around the corner, but I say, uh, thankfully have a recall and he doesn't one-shot me. Go for Pulse Bomb on the Ana. <laughs> Ana ends up jumping off the map instead of getting hit by my Pulse Bomb, which is a fair choice. The only reason why I went for Pulse Bomb is because I saw that the Kiriko used her Susu on the Roadhog. Oh, I just shoot the Roadhog, that's all alone on point, and he ends up dying, which is great. Yeah, the Ana did, the Ana didn't, like, that's a fair choice from the Ana. I would also, like, she was probably gonna die regardless. It's like one of those, I'm not gonna let you take me with you. I would rather take myself with myself and jump off the map. So now we're just gonna scout a bit. They have a lever, so the game is a bit unfair for us right now. I'm just gonna poke them down lane. Since we grabbed, I'm actually just not gonna shoot them at all. Since they have Roadhog all in, in a Kitsune, I would probably a certain death if I peek it. So I just don't peek it at all. Now the Kiriko is all alone over here, I fight her a bit, I know that she has no teleport now, so I'm gonna trace her a bit, seeing if she's killable, doesn't look like she is, and I'm not even gonna contest the point either, because all four of them are ready to shoot at me. The Ana is walking close to me, so I'm just gonna shoot the Ana a bit, using the health pack notes to me, and I was just about to recall it, but she ends up hitting me with a nade, so I die. I could have played it safer and disengaged the Ana right there, but I just uh, was too slow. The fight is still 4v4 though, so it's very winnable. I can look for left side angle onto the Ana here. Since I got hit by the nade, I'm just gonna wait and take the health pack once the nade runs out. Now I can push the Ana, because she's the highest value kill I can get right now. Plus my Lucio is fighting her. I see that the Kiriko and Maze over here. The Kiriko is low, we focus her first and we focus the maze because she has my ice block. Then I just go for the Roadhog, try to bolt bomb him. Yeah, I missed it, it's whatever. He's probably gonna die anyway, since he's the only one left alive. And it doesn't look like they have anybody that can touch the point. That's game. Let's go. Now arriving at the Shambali Monastery. Prepare your defenses. Select your hero. Time to start making up for it. So, so, Five, four, three, two, one. So we have Doomfist, Sanyata, Baptiste, and Genji. So we have a lot of uh, dive pressure from our Doomfist and Genji. Which I can utilize onto the backline. They have a trace as well. At the start here, I'm just gonna camp gifts left side angle because it's the best off angle any of them can take to get to my support. But since the Reinhardt is going very deep all alone into my team, we just focus him down. He, he just ends up dying instantly. So I'm gonna shoot the Genji instead because the Genji is deep. And we just do a defensive play right here because it's the best option I have. I shoot the Genji after his deep pack, I shoot the Mara a bit, then I recall some very low. And continue shooting the Mara up, link towards the health pack. We try to survive, the Mara ends up dying, and we just shoot the Tracer a bit. Even though I have no recall, I can still take a bit of poke against the Tracer to make sure she doesn't get too much base. And since I'm very low now, I'm just gonna 
blink backwards and keep my Sinyata so he can ult me. And then I'm gonna look for any value I can do to maybe stop the card. So I'm gonna blink twice over here, play above them, pay some attention. Two of them are looking at me, so I'm just gonna disengage slowly, playing for the mini health back over here, making sure they cannot get too close to me to kill me. And now I should trace a bit, I should get the Genji. Go over here, I recall because I took too much damage because I went a bit too far into them. Now I look for a pulse bomb since I've built it up. Going for the right side. Looking a bit, looking, looking, looking. I see the Ana scope in main. We end up shooting, hitting the Mara, which is not a great choice because he has Fade at her disposal. There's no health pack over here, so I'm just gonna recall now. Getting over here in close to the health pack. We end up finishing the tracer. And I'm being way away from the Ana because I'm very low and have low resources, so there's no re reason that I should take the duel right now. And some top of the HP now for support, I can go in again. I look for Anna, she's scoped in hard main, so we just shoot her down. Then we shoot the Mara after because she's main and she has no fade right now. So we finish her off and then we just go for the Reinhardt. And since Sir Hazen did a lot of damage to me, I'm just gonna wait for a second and get healed up. Now I can help my Doomfist chase the Tracer. And she ends up dying. I shoot the Genji in spawn with together with the Reinhardt that's low. Because I can build a bit more post bomb from the expired. And it's not too dangerous right now since I have my supports ready to heal me if I need help. And because a lot of them are dead. And we just poke them down a bit, and then took a lot of damage, and just go backwards and wait for a bit for healing. Then I'm gonna camp this left side room because the tracer might come through here at some point. Doesn't look like she is right now, so I'm just gonna back off now and set up for a post bomb for next fight by going high ground over here, so I can camp this room over here so the tracer can't get through. You can see the Anna's main. I can hear the devil monkey now. The mana baiting, so I'm gonna go and trade backline with the Anna. End up getting uh, slept, so I'm very killable right now. Uh, and I end up dying because of it. That was a nice leap from the Ana, resulted in me dying. I went a bit- the reason why I didn't end up killing the Ana and the die was because I mistimed it. I went a bit too late, or I could have waited and gone for somebody else, but I missed it up, so that's why I died. Shoot the mar mon monkey here, because it's very deep, because it's really cold. Shoot the tracer, because there's no recall. End up killing the tracer. Shoot the Genji, because he's very far pushed up and he's discorded. And now I just recall my HP back and then I can chase the monkey out. I'm very low, I want to take my supports, but I ended up dying to the monkey. Which is kind of unfortunate, I just took a bit too much poke uh, right here. Which uh, sucked. Is my middle name. So now I'm going to try to assert the situation of the fight. Looks like my Doomfist is very deep and he ends up dying, which is unfortunate, but that doesn't mean the fight is lost quite yet because they might over push and we can punish them for it like the monkey is right now. We shoot the monkey, shoot the monkey. I gotta finish off the monkey, I recall. It's worth it to waste my no to utilize my full recall just to finish off the monkey because it gives us a way better position in the fight. As long as I survive, it's all fine. Then we try to shoot the Genji, this Genji is very deep without deflect and uh, without dash, so we shoot the Genji. Now we try to focus on the Tracer because there's no recall. I end up not being able to do too much damage to her, so I just recall instead to get out, stay safe. The monkey looks like he has ult, so we're just gonna focus on the monkey ult all together, and he might be able to die. Because he's going very alone right now without his team, he ends up killing my Kiriko, but it's fine because she dies for it. I'm gonna take a right side angle here, trying to look for the support. Focusing down the Moira. Moira is very low, so I go for her. I can see the Ana is far main, but she's a bit too far away from me to go for her, so I'm just gonna recall back my HP and try to help my Doomfist fight the Genji instead. And he's very low, so we should put on the Genji. Now we can chase the Ana a bit, maybe. Nah, we switch to Roadhog. As well to Roadhog, so I'm just gonna back off instead of taking the duel with the Ana and the Roadhog. It's a bit too dangerous. And I can hear the Tracers coming left side, so I'm just gonna take the early duel with her. Or maybe she's actually not. I think she's coming right side instead, so I'm gonna go right side and maybe go above them, set up a post bomb on the Ana because that's the best target I can go for right here. Got to scatter where the Ana is. Looks like the Ana and Genji is fighting my Genji really far back, so, and, but the Ana died, so I can't really go for anybody. I'm just gonna disengage to the spawn and take the health back because it's it's the better option. I could disengage to my own spawn, but that's the place they want to go. And if I did engage to their spawn, they will have to split up between going to my spawn to my team spawn or go to their uh, go to their own spawn which is like the up the wrong direction for them i can fight the ana here because the ana died in the fight so we just go for her we stick her and i can just now go back to the fight and help my team 
Since Anna died and that fight, it's probably it was the best option for me just to spawn one camper. I can fight the tracer now because the tracer is turning around to try and shoot me. Fight the Mara a bit because the Mara is very low. Fight the tracer because the tracer has no recall. End up using my own recall, but I still take the blue because we have about equal uh, about equal resources. She ends up killing me though, and they capture the point, so that's unfortunate. I could have been a bit quicker and getting back after killing the Ana. I just uh, messed it up by being too slow. And I could also maybe have focused the Moira instead of taking the duel with Tracer. Because the Moira was a more important target to kill in that situation. I should be hog here, trying to build my Pokemon a bit early while trying to assess where to go. I can try to help my Genji with fighting the Tracer over here. I end up killing the Tracer. The Moira faded right into my face, so I'm just gonna blink behind her and fight her all as hard as I can because she has no fade, so it's very killable. And then I can try to help my backline with the Genji that's very low because my Doom first ulted him. And try to dodge the Roadhog so he doesn't hook me. Play around the payload and use cover. He already used hook now, so I can just play very aggressive and walk into him while trying to finish off the Ana that's trying to help him. Go for a post bomb as well. That was just to make sure the Ana died, but it wasn't really necessary, the post bomb. I don't have to do too many aggressive things right here. I could hinder it, so I just hide behind the corner and get healed. Then I can camp the left side angle here so nobody can walk over here. I just play around cover. I can even go for the Ana that's in spawn right here because she's very alone with no help, so I kill her. And I shoot the cat because he's taking a duel with me. I'm just gonna blink here, blink here, and then go towards the different health pack because she was taking the one that I wanted to take. So now I just go after I take the health pack, I just go back and I can duel the cat a bit. I can try to get out and regroup with my team, but the cat ends up hitting a headshot on me, which is very unfortunate for me. So sometimes you can see it's not worth it to, to take a 2v1 fight. Even though my team was fighting 4v3, they still ended up losing it. So I, there was some other value I could have gotten that might have been better. Now I'm just trying to focus and touching the point by blinking, 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 and then touching at the last second, recalling out when I'm very low, and it doesn't look like I'll be able to touch again. You should always try to recall when when you're touching the point, because maybe you could touch again if somebody else touched, but it didn't look like anybody else could touch. It's good to... There's two ways of winning a duel, guys. You either win a duel by forcing them out of the space which you're fighting for, or you kill them. Those are the two ways you win a duel. If a tracer uses a recall in a duel against you, and you don't use your recall, you have the advantage, so it's hard for the tracer to keep the space without dying. But if the tracer disengages after she uses a recall, it's probably either worth it to maybe chase her if she is killable, or then it's worth it to go for somebody else because now you own the space which you're fighting in since the tracer left. in and out in no time stay near will you i hate when people run off without me here roll out the bright side and I want to take some space over at the off angle so I can help my team push the payload as far as possible. I can see the Mara's over here, so I'm just going to take a right side and continue over here, trying to bait the attention a bit. Building it up so my Doomfist will have an easier time engaging. I'll poke me a bit. I can see my Genji's ready to go on somebody, so I'm getting ready to help my Genji go on somebody. But I don't want to overcommit too much since my Doomfist has just died. I can go in now since the Genji engaged, and I can try to help him focus on the Hanzo, and he ends up dying. And I just recall back to safety and I play a bit slow now. They use the rest, save the guy, and now I'm just waiting because I'm expecting somebody to maybe push me here. I'm waiting a bit, scouting whether or not they're going to. And then I'm just waiting for my team to regroup. If they're all low ground right now, I'm gonna take a closer angle from them over here. And I can just focus the high ground together with my Doomfist. And now we're set up, the Hanzo is taking a duel with us. So we focus the Hanzo down while dodging him. We hear the Mario use fate trying to get to me. So I poke the Mario down. And I kill her because she used her, her survival ability on going aggressive. So I just punish her for it. And then we go for the cast now together with my Genji. And then the Roadhog is the only one left alive. So we want to make sure he doesn't kill me. So I want to just use my cooldowns on making sure he looks at me. But not, not giving him a chance to hook me. So my team can kill him. Now, set up post bomb here. I'm actually gonna go underneath here. 
and push all the way up here behind them. Because usually people at this point hold somewhere around here when they want to retouch where the Cassidy is right now. So I'm just gonna wait a second and look for a pull form on any target right here. Do the cast a bit, link again, link again, pull bomb him because he has used roll, and then I just fight him over here. The Mercy is now trying to risk the cast right in front of me, so I, I kill the, kill the uh, Mercy. Then I go for the Hanzo next because he's the most killable target right here. Poke him a bit, but I disengage at the same time because some of my teammates have died, so it's not worth it for me to take the duel or to, to force any kills right now. But instead, I'm gonna wait for my Doombus to get back, and then I can walk up to further right side, and then I'm gonna hit shot by the Hanzo, which sucks. I was a bit bad movement for me. I could have been quick getting behind the corner i just hit the wall so that sucks a lot since we're in a bit of a bad spot right now and it looks like we're not doing a lot i'm gonna try to help my team utilize the ults as much as possible next time we have nanoblade which is a very good win condition I got headshot here, so I'm just gonna blink towards the health pack and blink back behind cover. Making sure I don't take any more damage and I can wait for the also regen to kick in. I can scout a bit where the Kess is and he ends up headshotting me, which sucks, so I just die. That was a nice shot from the Kess. He was peeking me at a very good timing where it, I wasn't expecting him to peek again. My Genji is nanoblading and he killed two. I can engage now together with my Doom first and try to finish off anybody else. They used two ultimates to try to survive, so now it's just about finding any targets that might be killable. Like the Roadhog or the Cash right now, or the Mara that's very deep behind us. So we just focus the Mara down. Now I want to help my Doom first and he ends up dying, which sucks. So I just try to build my post bomb now to do an attach position. I force the Cash to deal with him here. He ends up headshotting me, which sucks, and I die. Here for the highest carry potential, I want to try to post bomb the Mercy or the Hanzo. Because those are the two certain kills I will get if I post bomb anybody. I'm gonna walk up over here, blink blink, post bomb. My Doombush punches him away from the post bomb, which sucks. So I'm just gonna try to chase him up here and force any duels with him. Hit the Hanzo over here, so I try to dodge the hook and dodge the Hanzo. Use my recall to do so. And I want to touch the point, so I'm sure we get into overtime. Dodge the Roadhog. Go back main here, jump on the payload, jump behind them, shoot the Hansel because he's very deep. Then we just go to Mercy and focus her because she's very killable right now. Hit towards her, recall, kill the Mercy, and now I just survive and push the payload together with my team. I blink up towards and try to finish anybody off that we can. And we know that Tracer now, so I'm just gonna fight her. There's no recall now, so now I'm just about chasing her. Ends up dying. I take the health pack and I can set up to build post bombs since I almost have it again. Pushing a bit. I'm blinking away from the Rodox so he doesn't hook me. I'm really dodge it and I build my post bomb again. I can look for a second stagger, but I end up getting headshots. I'm just gonna recall it and play behind the corner over here and wait a bit. Now I can listen and try to figure out where they're gonna go. Since I don't think they're looking at this angle anymore, I'm gonna go from this angle. Got to hit a post bomb on, for example, the Mercy that's right in front of me over here. I can just go, hit the Cassidy that's low, and then we just try to make sure the Mercy doesn't rest. Or I can go and shoot the back line, like the that just used Fade right here. Go and shoot her. Go for the health pack, the mini, dodge the Roadhog, and then blink behind cover and just play safe now because the Roadhog won't be able to chase me. The Roadhog and Tracer is going on with both of them, so I'm just gonna blink too much over here, go for the mini, try to dodge the Tracer while blinking further and going for the next health pack on my route that is this Mega. And I can just survive and they spawn for a few seconds. If a lot of them pushes me, I just wanna live for as long as possible because they're using a lot of resources and trying to deal with me. I blink away from the Tracer when she's about to shoot, blink again, blink again, and then I just focus on the Tracer now that he has no recall and I end up winning in the duel. Just because I have good blink management. That's all I'm doing better than the enemy Tracer. Now I'm set up behind them, I revert their attention over on me, I can shoot the Mercy and the Cast since they did a lot of damage to me, I'm just gonna recall it and try to survive, shoot the Mara's more bit, dodge her now that I'm very low with no recall, and I'm gonna wait for my supports to heal me. I'm gonna survive here, I'm looking for a pull bomb, just go blink in, pull from the Cast, disengage, go for the Mercy now because she's all alone with no Mara help. 
I'll focus the murder. I recall Tracer's damage and I try to shoot the Tracer, blink away from her. Now that she has no recall, I can take a duel with her. I'm baiting her closer to me while I take the health back so I can fight her at an advantage. End up killing the Tracer as well. I'm just gonna disengage the Roadhog ult and take the mini health back over here. Then I'm gonna blink out and try to survive by going down here. Since it's probably me that has to touch the point, I'm just gonna set up for doing it in the last three seconds so I can click the overwatch overtime timer over overtime timer and I don't die into the roadhog trap plus the more damage just right there. There's not a lot more I could have done right there. Except for predicting the roadhog trap which I couldn't see. So that's unfortunate and we end up losing the game. Thank you for the sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Prepare your defenses. Select your hero. So we got Hollywood. Oh, I don't mean Hollywood, I mean Route 66. Yeah. You can't tell me they don't have a small bit of a semblance, but okay, it's not really a lot of a semblance. So yeah, I just I just misspoke, it's Route 66. Yeah. We have Queen, Farah, Mercy, and Anna. I'm just gonna try to help my Farah take her duels, and I'm gonna be ready to follow up on my Queen. I think they have an Ash, they have a Lucio, they have a Cassidy, they have a Moira. Moira use Spade and Cassidy one. I'm just gonna blink in and finish off the Cassidy and use Recall for it. It's worth it in this scenario because I'm so certain that the Cassidy is gonna die if I do this. It is worth it to just trade off my Recall for a guaranteed kill. I'm gonna poke the Mara a bit, and I'm gonna poke the Lucio because the Lucio is low. Poke the Mara continuously because the Mara is one. I'm gonna com commit now because the Mara is very low, and then I'm just gonna stay inside, stay in, and finish off anybody that's low together with my Farah. Then I can blink to the high ground because it's way, way harder for them to kill me when I'm up here. I can just disengage now, take the heals, and since they're looking at me quite a lot. They can just poke down, put my post bomb. And so, since we have a pick right now, the fight is already kind of won. It, it would require one of us to make a mistake for them to win the fight at this point. So I don't really need to do too much. And since they make, we killed the Morga, I don't need to do anything else right now. I can look for more stackers. And for example, the Soldier that's low. And my Farah died, so now it's a bit easier for them to win. So I'm gonna be called if the Soldier Healy is right with me. And I'm gonna look for punishing this Bastion because the Bastion is very far pushed up. And try to help my Queen. Get the soldier because the soldier is low. Blink in, finish off the soldier, blink backwards and get the healing for my support. And then I can just look for any further stackers by pulling the enemies and taking a bit of space right now. Since there are a few people down, it's completely worth it for me to go in. I can poke on the Morga because the Morga is very low. The Morga sadly ends up surviving, but that's whatever. I can just continuously poke from behind them. And I take a bit of pokes and I'm gonna hide for a second. Wait a little so they don't look at me too much. I can follow up my Queen's ult by looking at any targets that I that are low. And then I just recall it because the murderer was poking me quite a lot and I can fill up the rest of my pulse bomb by just poking the rest of them. I'm just trying to use these high grounds and this space inside on, in the, this tunnel right here because it's the best space for me to play in right now since it's hard for them to get vision on me and I can utilize the high grounds. Tumba used her transicator in so I'm just gonna punish her because she has very low abilities. I drop and try to look for a with the soldier. I end up recalling it and I can just go backwards into this room. 
This room is also really good because if they push me inside of this room, it's very easy for my team to do a lot of damage to them. I can pick my Ana for healing and I can shoot the Morgan because the Morgan is very low. And then I can poke, poke the Soldier because the Soldier is very low. I can poke the Murderer. And we'll just pro target focus from this position inside the spawn. The only thing I gotta watch out for is respawn shooting me from the back. And I also look out for the Sombra because she might engage from somewhere over here. Or she might go on Ma'ana. I can dodge the Soldier by blinking up here. Gotta help Ma'ana still because the Sombra might go on her. I'm not gonna help my Queen because my Queen is very deep in there. Dana is very low because of my Terra shooting her. So I'll just finish off Dana and now I'll just look for anybody else I can help my team finish. Since I'm taking a fight on my supports, I want to get back as quickly as possible and try to help them. Looks like none of the squishes are alive and it's only the Morga. I'm just gonna help my queen poke the Morga slowly, but I don't want to take a too close duel with the Morga since he does a lot of damage. They have respawns on their advantage side right now, so me and my queen should probably disengage and wait for our team to come back. He ends up ulting. I can try to follow up any of the targets she's ulting, but it doesn't look like any of them are really low, so I'm gonna look for anybody else, like this Yata that's very killable right now. I'm gonna bring towards some Yata, I'm gonna pull from him and recall out to secure the kill. And then I'm just gonna bring to back into in, behind the cover into safety and wait for healing for my support. I can see the Morgan's engaging up here, so I'm just gonna disengage and let him take the space because I don't wanna take a straight on duel with the Morgan. I'm just gonna utilize the corners and poke him a bit. So he gets shot from multiple angles, and then I can just focus down on cards since it's overtime fight now and, and try to finish off the Mara that's on payload. of each other out there. If you ever need help, just fly to me, Angela. <laughs> ah, my hero. You're like a knight. You go get a lot of value on Tracer with That's post bombs and for. killing low health targets. Yeah, of course you do. Tracer's a very mobile character. If anybody is supposed to go into the enemy team and finish off somebody who's slow, Tracer is one of the best characters to do it. That's why I'm focusing on trying to help my team. What then? When when they shoot somebody and make them low, I always want to be the one to help them finish the targets off. Since Tracer is very good at that. Here, there's a nice spot where I can just double blink or triple blink and play up on this high ground up here. I can scout what the enemies have while being in a bit of a safer position than just going main. And I can see that they have. Morga again, Life Weaver, Soldier, and I just want to look in a hit because it's hard for the Ana and Soldier to go high ground right now and help their Life Weaver. I'm just going to go and fight the Life Weaver since Life Weaver is at a, a fight of an advantage fighting Tracer, so I'll just fight him and shoot him down. Even though I'm not killing him right now, it's still great value I'm getting because I'm making both of the supports look at me, or the, rather I make both of the attention sway towards me, and then I force them out, and now I just reset because two of my teammates died, I, can, I just have to wait for them while building post bomb. I don't have to force kills too much, I just, uh, and I don't have to force the support's attention right now because the, the supports have enough uh, resources to both look at me and make the team survive. So rather I would play for post one right now and just focus anybody that might be able to die. Since my team is respawned now and ready to go in, I'm following them up and punishing anybody that's close and I can now go in, look for post one on the life weaver. I disengage with the Ana. Don't want to get slipped so I just recall and utilize all of my resources in killing the Ana and I disengage the after and we end up capping the point. Victory. Play of the game. 